one man tossed eternally into the wilderness, he will have to battle and beat some of RuneScape's toughest monsters in order to supply and upgrade his weaponry and armor. All of this while being able to be attacked by any other player at any given time. But who? Who would take on such a fearsome challenge? I present... Wildernator! Hello guys and welcome to episode... Well, one. Feels great to be saying it, but this is going to be the start of season two. I have a whole video dedicated to the exceptions I'll be making for season two, along with a new goals list. So if you haven't seen that, I'd advise going back and watching our last video. And if you've just started joining us in season two, you've missed a hell of a journey in season one, so I'd consider going back and watching that first. I want to get all the non-wilderness stuff punted out at the start of the video, so I can just spend a day or two out of the wilderness and then lock myself back into it. As a very small recap, we'll be doing all the quests to unlock the monsters within the Wilderness Slayer Cave, plus a few extra, so we can do Dragon Slayer 1, unlock the KDB, and have the DFS on the goals list. As well as that, I'll be able to complete up to the Medium Wilderness Diaries. We'll also be allowing the house, so I can make my own obelisk, and also the tool storage for a spade to get some clue juggling content. Whatever quest items I'm able to get within the wilderness, naturally, I will. I thought a good place to start would be killing the imps at the God Wars dungeon so I can get the 20 balls of wool needed for sheep shearer, as well as the 10 bread that I need for death play to. Nice little start here, landing a very early Eki key as well as some bread. That's another ecumenical key in the same drop as a blue wizard hat, and yes, this is where I get my trademark blue hat from. First invent in, nice load of hats and wool for the quest. Imps also drop pots of flour and bread dough so we can get those into bread for the quest as well. There's another ecumenical key. Getting pretty lucky with these keys, that's another one. Another ecumenical key, making some money getting these quest items. That's those set of quest items knocked out which is pretty nice. Got some extra balls of wool for jewellery which is always nice. Plus some blue wizard hats and we made 430k from the ecumenical keys. All quests I'm going to be doing in PvP worlds. Iron Man Helm to make myself look that a bit more tasty with a smiteable item as well as 5 mil cash in my inventory. Bit nervous as I don't know the PvP worlds quite like the wilderness but let's just go balls deep and teddy straight into Varrock. Because the food we use is blight as well, we don't have any combo food. <laughs> okay, I was just worried about getting absolutely manhandled, but doesn't seem to be anyone here that can attack me. Oh, that guy did try and attack me, but he's a too low level. This could be interesting. We're doing the Priest in Peril quest, and that's the Guardian Dog Down, so I need to go back and tell King Raoul about that. Um, I'm very aware at some point I'm going to have to lose a loads of food to take some rune essence back or pure essence because that's what I've got. Let's tell you back into Varrock and see if anyone's there. Hopefully not. It's quite a scary teleport. Okay, that guy definitely, definitely could have attacked us. Um, I don't know how easily I'm going to be able to get away from PvP worlds. Thank God he was attacking somebody else. This was the part of the quest I was on about. We've got over 300 pure essence, so don't need to worry about getting that quest item. Um, I'm going to do it in a trip of 17 and two 16s, and uh, yeah, just kind of hope we don't get attacked, because if we do, I'm really going to struggle to get away. I think it's probably worth bringing in Tangles. Um, does that even work in a PvP world? Maybe we'll find out. Handing in the last load now to complete the Priest in Peril quest. That was a whole load of fuss about nothing. We didn't run into anybody, thankfully. Um, I did feel very exposed with only a little bit of food, but that's our first quest complete. We're going to be doing Rune Mysteries next. I think that Lumbridge, I'm pretty sure, is a safe teleport. I'm almost certain. But I think as soon as you run into the castle and things, you can be taxed. So probably have to watch out for that, although we are very, very close to the bank. And that's going to be Rune Mysteries complete. Just finishing up Enter the Abyss uh, mini quest. That is a diary requirement. Something else the Abyss mini quest unlocked was the major shop. So I can now actually buy blood runes if I wanted to. I do get a lot from revs, but if we ever need to, we now have access to be able to buy them from a shop.
The quest we just completed there were all prerequisites for the giant dwarf, which we need to partially complete for the dairy requirement. Whilst we need to be in Caldergrim anyway, we might as well pick up the marble block that we need to make the POH obelisk. Should oh he did get the freeze. Absolutely not today, thank you, fella. Managed to get away just as he got the TV. That's the dig site quest complete, and there's quite a lot of times where I don't have much food in the inventory, so it's nice to be able to knock that one out. Not that I expect to see anyone here, and as always, we'll drop all of the quest items that we didn't already own. This was potentially a damn close one. As you can see, I got TB'd right as I pulled the lever, so had he come through, um, yeah, that would have been it for me, because I'm really far from a bank. I wouldn't have been able to take the lever back, so he really should have come through. Probably thought it was a law, but we got away with one there. We can't wear the Dagenhide for this part of the quest because we need to be less than zero grams for it. But again, if we get caught, we got five mil, we got the pet on us, and uh, yeah, we got five food, so I should be pretty easy prey should we get caught. Fortunately, we didn't get caught. I mean, doing quests, you know, it is kind of unlikely, but I don't really hold back any punches. I do just teleport into any area. But that's the Temple of Ikov complete. We're getting pretty ballsy now, we've got just one food, because I had to remove loads of stuff, um, like the clothing to get in the camp. That guy there is kind of freaking me out, he looks like a scout or something, and we've got one food with lots of risk. Um, but let's just quickly get this finished up, I think we're just going to go for smithing, I haven't really given it much thought about what I'm going to be using it on. Uh, second one might as well go on smithing as well, a little bit of smithing XP never hurts, and that should be quest over, that's Taurus Trap complete. Just finishing up another quest, we actually had to staff bash Dad, the big troll, and the troll generals, because I forgot any sort of weapon, but fairly straightforward, troll stronghold done. This is going to be waterfall quest finished up, and total of 16 quest points. 16 quest points, and I have all the prerequisite quests for desert treasure, it's quite funny. I only need to start that so I can be assigned dust devils, now all we need to do is knock out the really easy quest to be able to start Dragon Slayer 1. Super easy one finished up, I like the fact that it was based around the edge of the wilderness. Um, yeah, super easy quest for Romeo and Juliet, but this has way too many cutscenes for my likings. I start talking to Romeo in the middle of Varrock in the busiest PvP world, so I'm kind of hoping that I can see my character down here, that he's not just stood in the middle of Varrock Square, uh, waiting to have his head chopped off. Uh, let's see if we're about to die, or... Okay, so we're fine. Romeo and Juliet completed. Um, yeah, I really wonder whether I was just stood there that whole time, or whether I went somewhere. Oh, 89, can't attack me. Oh, but they can, and that's multi combat. That's going to be a fuck no from me. Bish, bash, bosh. And by completing those simple quests, it meant that we had the quest points to be able to start Dragon Slayer 1. So we picked ourselves up a couple of anti dragon shields, so we're able to start the King Black Dragon. So now we just need to get ourselves a house and knock out the last couple of bits for our diary requirements, and then we can permanently lock ourselves back to the wilderness. We just have two tasks left, one of which is to lower out, out the Fountain of Rune and the other ones to have the Zamorak Mage teleport us, so let's get these ones done and the easy diary knocked out. Just to add a little bit of pizzazz, we decided to alk up one of our emblems for a cheeky 200k. I actually forgot to press record when we went into the Zamorak Mage, so we missed the final task, but never mind, that is the easy Wilderness Diary done, and we got the Wilderness Sword 1. Now let's knock out this Medium Diary, which is the final one we're going to be able to do with our current restrictions. So we need to ch charge an Earth Orb, um, Smith Golden Helmet, which is why we need between the Rock Quest, and open the Muddy Chest, which I have plenty of keys for. Making ourselves the Golden Helmet. Now onto the muddy chest, we have hundreds of these keys, well just over a hundred from the crazy archaeologist, um, why is it not opening, oh need to use the key on it, um, oh I didn't realise you got everything every time, I thought you got one of the listed things, never mind we'll just pick up the rubies as everything else is pretty pointless. For the orb charging requirement, I'm going to need to get myself a glass blowing pipe, which I can get from my house from the tool storage. So we're going to go and make a load of nails. Um, we're going to just make adamant nails because I do remember at the start of construction being a pain in the ass of any other nail. Um, hopefully we can use them, there's no requirement on it. Once we've got 35 construction, we'll be able to take out our glass blowing pipe and then we'll be able to make our orb in order to do the last diary requirement. To get the planks, we're just going to be picking them up from the graveyard. There are loads of zombies around, so it's probably going to be a bit of a pain, but we've only got to do it to 19 construction, then we can use our oak planks from Betion. 
that really wasn't too bad picking up those planks considering how long some grinds take on this account uh, construction is really really quickly there it is 19 so now we can use our oak planks you don't need nails of oak planks and we've got 2100 and um, Vetion drops oak planks and he drops them 300 at a time so what's that like seven drops that's uh, yeah it's quite a lot of construction XP that I'm gonna be able to get from that with those oak planks we already had a bank so we got 35 really really quickly and that's going to be tool storage 3 complete which means we can get our glass blowing pipe um <laughs> i was just building there so where's my tool storage uh, a bit weird that it just went to the other side of the room uh but there it is glass blowing pipe we can also get a needle not sure what good that would do us because we can't tan ha can't tan hides but i might as well grab myself an apron because uh yeah, never been able to get one before. We're going to be making two of the unpowered orbs because as well as the earth for the medium, I need to make an air orb for the hard diaries. Not that we can complete it, but we might as well tick that one off. There we go. And that's the final thing we needed to do to finish off the medium diary was make the earth orb. We might as well go and run up and make the air orb because it is one of the hard diary requirements. Before we completely lock ourselves back to the wilderness, what we're going to be doing is just knocking out everything that we are able to do outside of the wilderness for the hardened elite. And uh, yeah, and, uh, who knows, one day we may make a season three in the exception to be able to complete the elite diaries. Medium diary all done. I'd like to claim my reward. We get ourselves an antique lamp. Uh, I think probably go crafting because they're kind of hard to get the supplies. So it's going to be seven and a half crafting the XP and also completed the medium wilderness diaries, which will be the final one we're able to do. Last few diary requirements we can do. We can't do the 67 Hunter one. That's just too much of out of wilderness content. But we're going to knock out the rest of them and then we'll be back to the wilderness. Shortcut between Trollheim and the Wilderness done. I need to make an oily rod to catch the lava eel. Anything I've gotten or made outside the wilderness will be dropped as soon as the task is complete. Lava eel caught. And finally, I need to slay a lava dragon and bury his bones on Lava Dragon Isle. Honestly, I'm shocked that I haven't already completed this one. But I think I just saved all the lava dragon bones for the wilderness altar. And the final two tasks I'm able to complete of any of the other diaries that I have the levels for is to make an adamant scimitar. Um, you need 75 smithing. I have exactly 75, so we can do that. And to burn a magic log. So, inside the resource center. So, let's get this adamant scimitar made. And that should be a hard. And then I think this one's an elite. So, oh, 75 fire making. I'm. I'm 25 for making. Why the hell did I think I could do that? I think I was thinking of my wood cutting or something. Oh, what a plonker. But that is everything that we are now able to do in terms of diaries. Now we fully set up our account for this season, back to some familiar Revenant content. We're really close to 10k post above refs track, so I really want to finish that up so we can compare with 10k pre buff. Whilst I was in the Rev Caves, there was this team of three guys. They sort of flame me and call me a bit of a bait, so we exchanged a few words. But this was the final tussle we had. Let's see who comes out on top. I always try and bring my A game when escaping PKs, but often I'm not worried about the outcome either way, but my god that clutch escape felt good.
when one lives in the wilderness, he becomes in touch with all terrain and creatures. Except for Dragon Bolts. Dragon Bolts are a very different thing. Good fight, Tubby. <laughs> Holy shit, a crossbow. Oh my god, look at that on the ground. That is such a beautiful drop to see. Oh man, we were actually dry on um, on killing orcs, rev weapons. We haven't had a single one, so my god, is that a good drop to see. We're also planning on um, doing some scold rev soon. So if we were to get smited, we'd have no crossbow. But with a backup one, oh man, that just makes me feel so much better. Obviously, we would have preferred the chain mace, but... You know, I am not complaining on that. A, another crossbow? Brilliant. <laughs> okay, uh, 16 million emblem. The drops really are coming in now. We had ourselves a crossbow yesterday. And, uh, yeah, we got 16 million relic today. So, uh, yeah, happy days. Couple of days at the revs. We are now at over 35k Revenant kills, about 23,000 of them have been unscold orcs, so it took that many for us to see our first weapon as we got the crawls and the 16mm emblem in like the last 500 kills of that 10k. On screen you'll see pre and post buff 10k orc kills, without the crawls GP the GP value wouldn't actually be that different. But with the increased spawn rate and timers it makes for much more kills per hour on the post 10k. So with those increased spawn rates and the now added Revenant Demi Boss, it just makes for a much more fun area for both PKs and PVMers alike. Wanted to get a few more construction levels and get up to those planks that we got from Revenants on the Mahogany, and that is level 40. We've actually got a pretty, uh, pretty nice level coming up here, and that is going to be a 46 construction. Is that nice? No, but what it brings us is nice, which is 1,500 total. So uh, yeah, we can now access LMS. I mean, actually, we end up getting the quest point requirement anyway. Sort of bitching and moaning, we did to get the 1,500 total added. We didn't really need to, but anyway, it's nice to have it. I think it's probably quite self-explanatory how I'm training construction, but if anyone is curious, um, I'm just going to be making furniture with various different plugs. It's oak at the moment, then we'll go on to mahogany from Revenants. Um, but how I get directly back to the wilderness is I use my ring of jeweling to teleport to the Ferox Enclave. I'll grab out the planks from the Ferox Enclave and then teleport directly back to the house. Rinse and repeat. Grabbing ourselves, level 55 construction. I actually thought that that was a level that I needed for the spade from the tool storage, but it turns out we already had the spade, but it does now mean that we can fully upgrade our tool storage. Right then, here we are. Just need to upgrade to the st tool storage forks. We're able to do that and use our final two planks on the tool storage five. Very, very nice. That now does actually mean that we have access to all of the gardening equipment, buckets, spades, tinder boxes. We've also got the molds as well, which is really nice because, uh, yeah, it was an exception we made early on in the account. But it now means that we can drop those filthy mainland molds and we can uh, grab our molds from our house. And that's going to be level 60. Uh, it's actually about 250k XP an hour, which for wilderness rates is, uh, yeah, unheard of. So uh, this is going really, really fast. I know it says 190k up there, but uh, you've got to stop to make yourself a little brew. You know, you don't want those, you don't want those hands aching. And with this mahogany table, we're about to get ourselves 70 construction. And uh, yeah, that flew by really quickly. But let's not forget, we had to kill a hell of a lot of rev for that. So you're probably thinking, I need to get to 80 for the obelisk. Doesn't seem too bad from 70. We just flew up there. Uh, yeah, here's the catch. Um, I've only got about 1k planks left, so I'm going to need another 8k. And looking at the revenant, the 10k revenants I've killed post-buff, I'm going to need to kill about another 30,000 revenants for 70 to 80 construction. So, there we are. I mean, I don't really mind because I'd like to get to 100k revenants as a little side goal anyway, and revenants are great money, and we still need the mace. But, uh, yeah, it's not quite as simple as it might seem. Now, over to the new improved goals list. Before we look through these, if you enjoyed my intro, I personally think it's epic. It was made by a guy called The Skull. There was no obligation to give him a shout out. It was a paid commission, but I generally do rate his content. He makes videos and he has fantastic animations in them. He also does tutorials on how to use Blender for RuneScape. I think they're great. So I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. Why not go check it out and subscribe if you enjoy his content. And if you've enjoyed this video of mine, please drop it a like and check your subscribe. With leagues and things, it's been really hard to hit the algorithm, but we're still putting in the time to drop the best quality content we can. So let's take a look at the goals list. It's got tons of new things on there, like the new Wilderness Slayer Cave monster drops and all of the stuff on the miscellaneous for some hopeful clue juggling content. 
We're going to start hitting some of the new content hard in the next video, so make sure you keep an eye out for that one. I hope you enjoyed the start of our journey into season Hello guys, and welcome to episode 2 of season 2 of the Wilderness Only Iron Man series. I'd love to try and get some of the new monsters we unlocked within the Slayer Cave this episode, to see if we can get some juicy loots. But first, it's going to be a task of spiders, which isn't too bad at all, because that means some Venonatus. Just three kills into the task, and we already see our first Loranial key. Nice little start, couple more kills in, we get a D2H. Another key with some red spider's eggs for herb lore, a juicy. Bit of cash odor. 100 grimy snaps, that's a really nice drop because it's herb lore XP, but also 75 full super restores. 45 left on the task, and we've had some very nice drops thus far. Oh, nice, a dragon pickaxe. My Christ, they've got expensive, over 5 mil now. Here comes the money! Here we go! Unfortunately, we did go down. Their team was just too big that they were able to tag most of the dragons, which made it really difficult for us. Also, getting stronger means when we box the dragons, we kill them too quickly. Obviously, I don't have access to brews to brew down, so uh, yeah, unfortunately, boys, they did get us on that occasion. Made the onyx bolts, and the stack be looking kind of juicy. Gonna make plenty of coin doing Alk Agility uh, to the 89 that we need for the Revenant hard jump. Also just realised that we can now actually wear climbing boots, so I'm going to pick up some of these. Although we have access to dragon boots, it's some nice welfare boots, and uh, yeah, one point for ten boots. I do not mind if I diddly do. And whilst we're in the market for unlocking things that we now have access to, let's get bigger and badder, because now it means that we can get superior monsters, which we didn't have access to before, because none of the ones in the Slayer Cave had it. Um, I'm just going to have a little look about, because I haven't looked at this shop for a long old time. Um, that one's already okay, so we can be assigned um, uh, abyssal demons and jellies and things like that. Uh, no, we don't want to disable that. Hopefully, yeah, I'm sure that we can just that. Task storage, 1,000 points. Don't really see a lot of point in that. I think I'm going to extend these Abbey Demons because, yeah, at least we get a whip, but probably just keep them extended because we can get superiors. And what else? Next, we can get superiors off, so we might as well extend those as well. Right then, boys. Time to put on our big boy pants and start doing some Scold Revenants. If we get smited, we lose a well... Uh, yeah, let's not even think about that. We're going to do some testing with the Avarice. Avarice. Someone's going to tell me I've said it wrong, but uh, yeah, just say it the way I say it. So if we lose, uh, if we die, we lose that. So pretty much we're just, well, not going to die. Someone got on us in Swamp Bark Armour, which for the record I think is criminally underrated. In situations like the caves, an extra 2-3 to three seconds worth of entangle is pretty decent. Or maybe I'm just saying that some I when attacking my red dehyde ass in Ancestral and Crystal and all that jazz. This is my first encounter, Scald, and my god boys have bought some spice, knowing the risk. Ho oh, ho, shit me, that is some big coin, boys. Have a giddy gander at this one, boys. Giza slips into some pretty good strength bonus to slice my fucking head off. First spec hits an 81, second spec is 69. That's a total damage of 150. Oh, and the kicker to that... As you can see, I forgot to get Protect Item up. So, uh, yeah, we were 4 HP away from losing the crossbow. Let's get an instant replay on that very, very close call. I was actually overhealed at 115 HP when he got his first hit in. I was also fairly swift on the combo eats to survive the second hit. It really doesn't get much closer than that, boys. When you start hearing people like that say things like that, that gives me a fucking hard on. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this just happened. Um, another 16 million emblem. Lovely. Ooh, now that is a task we'll take. Laren's key with 18 left on the task. 100 KC at the Chaos Alley. I'm not sure if I should be proud or ashamed. We're just getting that now. Six left on the task. We managed to snag a dragon pick. My D pick collection is growing very nicely. Fighting a new Maledictus boss and a PK gets on us and it's real tough when a PK gets on you here because you're also being attacked by the PK but also the Maledictus so uh, yeah let's see how this one plays out for us.
Okay, so we have a how hands task, and considering I now have access to a spade, there's a very real chance that I can do some clue juggling. So I'm going to grab a wealth and view scroll. Well, it turns out I could have just picked one up from the hellhounds themselves. Trove of parchment, not really sure if it's worth me using it, but it is a cool 2.4 mil. Okay, cool. We've got ourselves a wildy step. Right, boys, things are seriously spicing up. We've got two wilderness steps now. Uh, we've run them to these hellhounds. I just feel there might be a few less PKs here than in the caves. We've come back to the caves because the spawns on those other hellhounds were just absolutely terrible. So, uh, yeah, just got to hope PK doesn't come. Ah, oh, boys, we didn't concentrate enough and we lost both of our clues. But in all honesty, I didn't have much time to carry on juggling anyway. We just got ourselves a spider's task and we use a lot of prayer restore potions. So we're going to use up the bones we got to get more prayer points per sip. No PKs at the door, 64. PK tried to get me, so I just tangled him and shut the door in his face. Still alive at 65. Well in the mix at 66. We still levelling at City Sevelin. Not today, mate. Feeling fine at 69. And we are just about to get ourselves level 70 prayer. This would normally be a big level, but lot to the wilderness. There's not really anything it gives me. There is something very satisfying about just entangling someone at the Chaos Altar and just standing the other side of the wall. 71 prayer, that's going to be our final prayer level as we're out of bones. I will come back for 72 soon as we get an extra pair prayer point per sip. Someone got right on us at the end. Bones or no bones, it is my duty to make you look silly, sir. Prayer out the way, we jump straight onto the Venatus task and we got ourselves another dragon pick. I feel like I've been very lucky with these recently, although I've still not landed the treasonous ring and we're over double the drop right now. 100 grimy snapdragons and that is definitely one of my favourite drops to see. Laren's key with 11 left to go. 6 left on the task and it's a D2H to add to the Evergrown collection. So we decided we were going to get one of the new tasks where I could land a superior. We had burnt through over 2,000 points trying to land one of these tasks, which is crazy as there is a few of the new tasks and they're not terribly weighted. We did eventually get one, however it was the worst at jellies, but at that point I was just happy to land one of the new tasks. Spending all of our time within one region, we don't see collection lock pop-ups very often, but we do have a new one here with the Mithril Boots. Here we go, first superior on the account and hopefully many many more to come as things like the imbued heart are super rare. I actually did forget that the Wilderness Slayer cave means that they've got a guaranteed Laren key drop but that is lovely to see. We then went on a big Wilderness Slayer adventure where we had to escape some PKs, give them a bonk on the head from time to time to teach them a little lesson, got some of the new drops like the Trove of Parchments but along the way we collected many many Laren's keys. Whilst we do have full Dagon High, it's always nice to grab some more pieces and then we might be able to start risking some of the dupes. We have a whole load of skill and goals that we also want to hit and supplies can be tough to come by locked in one area. So from the keys we can grab uncuts for crafting as we're still working towards that glory. Ores for smithing, I'd like to be able to make my own runite bolts and we can get raw fish for cooking. It's pretty much our only way to train cooking and we need level 90 for dark crabs. There are other supplies in the chest too, but most of them aren't a great deal of help to us. We're currently sat on 72 Laranial Keys in the bank, and we're going to do a big opening at 100. We finally have ourselves an Abyssal Demon task, and a pretty huge one at nearly 250. So let's see if we can land ourselves one of those iconic Abyssal Whips. Coming in with 89 attack. 15 left on the task, Laren's key, no superiors or whip so far, which is a little anticlimactic, but it is just our first task, and there will be plenty more to try and get one in the future. Bear's task, let's go visit the big old bear. That's going to be 700 kill count at Callisto. 707, grab them ourselves a T2H.
couple of escapes, but we did also get taken down for a fair few effort, but that is 750kc. This is going to be task over. Why do I never get the supply drops when they'd actually be handy, but it's nice to get that one knocked out. Who the fuck is that guy? Who the fuck is that? No damn well who I am. Who the fuck is that? Damn. Oh my god. That's a painful one boys, almost slipped away but the bolt raggy got us, that's two out of three avarices down the drain. Look at this sneaky little sausage sitting in such low HP, not sure whether he's DC'd or just run out of food or what happened, but one simply does not leave a man of that stature standing. Sorry mate, I'd absolutely love to be able to pick up that loot, but unfortunately it's just GF to you. Talking to GFs, I'll be taking my one free ticket to the Farrox Enclave, thank you very much. And for those of you that don't speak fluent PK like myself, that means good fight, you very good looking man. <laughs> no bloody way boys. It's just getting a little bit silly now. That is our third one this video and we've actually made over 50 million emblems. A very nice. I love each and every one of you boys that watches my video. Apart from this guy. This guy can go fuck himself. Here, life lessons. I've got a life lesson for you. Get good. On our ever-ending hunt for red dehyde bodies, we get ourselves a malediction shard. KC, 3,958. Odium shard, number 974 million. Here we go, boys. This is going to be a whopping 4,000 KC. Rank 1 was on 5k kills since I started the account, but after he saw me climbing, he started killing them again, which is pretty funny. So, will we ever take rank 1, or will we forever be ranked 2? Right boys, I really want another blast at a clue juggling session. We have a wieldy step in the bank, so let's try our luck. Clue juggling doesn't really suit my normal gameplay, so I tend to take lots of breaks. But when I have a spare time, I'm going to try and knuckle down and get a decent session in, try and get a casket for you boys. So nice that these hellhounds have drops, because you know, even if we don't end up with a casket, we make ourselves a bit of spondoolies. Not gonna lie boys, when these peak hairs got on us, I was panicking a bit. I didn't want to die and lose the effort in my bow as we're packing quite a fair bit because I wanted a decent session at the uh, Howl Hounds, but I also really didn't want to lose the clue. We did manage to escape the team of peak airs. We managed to get the log, run back, go back into our original world, which was a pretty big risk because they could have been there waiting for me. We managed to grab our precious clue and we managed to get away from the peak airs just as they logged in. Yeah, not going to lie, felt pretty damn good. Just kind of thought we'd be able to pick up a clue box from LMS, which we can. So I'm going to grab one of those. So at least if we do die, we'll be able to keep at least one clue. Nope. Nope. Got our second wieldy step. The risk of a PK coming in at any moment and just ruin this session. Uh, yeah, kind of adds to the excitement. But also, my God, it's a painful thought. Nope. Nope. <laughs> oh boys, that is a painful one. It's a wilderness step, but we've got no way of getting blue DI van braces. Oh, damn it. Gonna have to drop it. Nope. Nope. Oh, boys, you have no idea how satisfying that is to see. That's three wieldy steps. We're gonna go for one more step, boys. Come on.
Boys, look, it's a shame after countless hours getting one clue away we didn't manage to have a bash at the casket. But, from every fail, we need to look for the positives. I was able to get three wieldy steps and closing in on a fourth, which does mean at some point we will get that fourth wilderness step. I want to go through some of the math with you boys around the clue scrolls. With a ring of wealth imbued, the clue rate goes from a 1 in 64 to a 1 in 32, with a chance of that wilderness step being a 1 in 15.2%, which means I should get a wilderness step from a hellhound, sort of one in every 192 kills. With a crossbow, I can kill about 150 per hour. Chances that we get a casket with just two steps is 3%. Chances that we get a casket with three clues is 18.3%. And chances with four clues is 43.6%. Now I know those odds, I think four clues is going to be optimal to go for. Now what did we learn from the stint? Well, actually I might be better off waiting until we get a whip. Yes, a whip will be less kills per hour than a cross, but I can just welfare the kills. If I get attacked, I'll just allow myself to die. I should have just about enough time if I've recently dropped a clue to run from the enclave to pick up my clue and restart the session. I really feel this is going to be my best move going forward. Yeah, alright, we may have failed this time, but eventually we will acquire that casket. I can absolutely guarantee you boys, we will, and now I know it's truly possible. Hello guys and welcome to episode 3, season 2 of the Wilderness Only Iron Man. Sit back, grab a brew, beer or beverage of choice as this episode starts with a tragic tale. If you ever wonder how fresh I am between ending one episode and starting another, this should give you some idea. You might be able to see I'm being attacked and currently lagging an absolute ton. That's because this flip first clip was recorded whilst I was rendering my previous episode. This meant I was pretty defenceless versus the peak here, as every click I made had a few seconds worth of delay. I couldn't switch prayers, there were delays on eat, and frankly I was just being power drived. I decided to use a Zamorok Mage, as I hoped that would be my escape. I am aware that the Abyss drains your prayer. My idea was to restore up, protect the crawls, and hope I could go back and loot my items. I hadn't factored in two major things. One. As I'm always in the wilderness, blighted items to me are just like normal items to you. Strictly speaking, the abyss itself isn't the wilderness. Tut tut, wilderness boy. Which meant my blighted super restore potions didn't work. The second thing I didn't factor in was loot keys. I'd have no opportunity to go back and get my things, such as my items. This included my crossbow, as it was now in this PK's loot key. Fresh after this death, I was pretty upset losing such a rare item. But thankfully, a few episodes ago, we got a dupe crossbow. I am, however, down to one crossbow now, and I'm sculling with it. So the question is, what comes first? The chain mace, or the crossbow smite? Let's kick things off. So, last episode, you saw me get a few trover parchments, and I got a few suggestions that I should be using them on the Mage Arena 2 cape. I can get so many per hour that it's not really worth using a trover parchment. But somebody did say I could use it on the rune pouch, so... What? Nothing interesting happens. Um, okay, so apparently I can't use it on the rune pouch. Or oh, hang on, there's Perudu, isn't there? Don't I have to... Can't I use it on him or something? Let's try that, maybe. Um, it, does this actually work or not? Okay, cool, it does. So I've just got to grab myself 500k and the trove parchment, and then I can uh, lock my rune pouch, which is going to be really useful. Um, because that's 75 points, that's definitely worth locking. So there's been a lot of controversy about the PJ timer. I'm pretty indifferent myself. It makes my entangle and log slightly easier, but I also can't box NPCs. So there's pros and cons for escapes. But this Venonatus clip shows how broken it can be. So PK hits me. Because Venonatus then hits us both, but then hits me last, it means I have the full PJ timer before he can attack me again, meaning I can just run away and log. Although I found this pretty funny, it is absolutely broken. After shelling out a hefty 75 points on Rune Pouch, I wanted to do some LMS. I don't show much of my last man standing, but I do a fair bit for supplies. I like to try and keep my points around 200, so I've got some spending money in case that super LMS bot wave ever comes back. I don't use Mage when doing LMS. Do people call me a slimy rag bolter? Yes. Does not using Mage still get me good points per hour? Yes. Am I currently rank 125 LMS for all irons? Yes. And am I rank 1? Wilderness only, no mage, no F key. Name starting with W, rank 1, iron for LMS. Also yes. Q the montage.
are about to get ourselves an absolutely huge level in level 2 Hunter. I could lamp to 27 and there is one impling spawn that sometimes passes over the wieldy ditch. We could have a go at bare handing that for some XP. Does it sound horrific? Yes. Am I going to attempt it? Absolutely. bloody scootly. So, boys, you might remember the pain in my last episode where we got so close to getting enough clues to have a go at clue juggling. Well, since then, clue juggling has got a pretty huge buff. I learned about this through a YouTuber called Skeledor, who makes pretty fun videos. I'll link his channel. If you think, this bastard never linked his channel, please just remind me, I just forgot. But as you can see, when they talked about death pile changes, untradeables, this includes clue scrolls, are on your player save, not world save. Meaning, when you log out, clues stay on the ground until you log back in, even if that's on a different world or hours later. So, rather than having to pull out a 12 hour day, not even making a coffee or taking a break and still possibly not getting enough clues, you can just get a couple of clues, log for the night, when you log back in, they'll be exactly where you drop them. Yeah, pretty massive. Okay boys, we now have five clues. Uh, I've never had five clues on the ground. I'm still pretty nervy as getting attacked at the wrong time, not giving me time to get back and pick them up to redrop or lag. And uh, yeah, these could all be gone. But we've come this close, so why not go for six and get that guaranteed casket? Right then boys, we've got another clue. This could be our sixth clue for the casket. Come on, come on. Oh, it's a lumbridge step. Nope, got to be a drop. Got to be a drop. Here is another one and a, another shot at that sip clue and clue casket. Let's just quickly kill this one, see if it drops a clue. It doesn't. Right, come on. If this is a wilderness step, we have a guaranteed casket. Come on, come on. Oh, no, mother of mine. It's another drop. Getting so nervy. Come on, come on. Right, boys, this is what I'm talking about. I can be attacked at any moment, so as long as I can tank and pick up all the clues and drop them before being killed... I got time to get back to the wilderness, assuming that they don't freeze me off and I can continue juggling. This is why I need to go in welfare gear. It is way less kills per hour than the crossbow, but it does mean that I'm able to just die and come back. Thankfully, on this attempt, I did manage to get back and get back to my beautiful clue scrolls in time. Right, here we go, another clue. For goodness sake, please just be the wildy step. Just get this paid over with. Come on, wildy step, wildy step. That's not the fairy ring step. As you can see, boys, uh, yeah, we got attacked again. We managed to pick up our clues and get them back on the ground to be able to run back, but literally this time by the skin of our teeth. Okay, so a combination of being spooked. As you can see, my log time is also three hours before finding that final wildy step. We've decided to go with five clues, so we've run them all back to the Ferox Enclave. I'm just praying it's a four or five step, or we get a back-to-back -back wieldy on one of the clues for a guaranteed casket. It would be so painful not to get a casket now. Okay, so first clue done. It's not a back-to-back, -back, so still could potentially not end up with a casket. Yes, boys, that's a wilderness step. That is a uh, back to back wilderness step, which now does indeed mean that we will 100% be getting a casket, assuming we don't lose any of these clues. Let's go get that casket. Okay, so we've got another wilderness clue. Um, this is actually redundant because we've already got the six clues, but it's kind of nice to know that we're getting some back to back wilderness clues. So, uh, yeah, let's go finish off this casket. And there, boys, oh my god, it looks beautiful. We have ourselves a hard casket. Um, yeah, two surplus clues left over, but um, my god, that casket looks beautiful in my inventory. 
Right, boys, as it is our first casket of hopefully many in the future, I thought I'd open it somewhere a little bit special, somewhere a little bit risky, so let's go up to the deep wilderness. If you have made it this far, please do consider giving it a like. I've put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into this one, and just double-check your subscribe because it really does help us grow. But that is enough procrastinate, and we have waited long enough to get this casket, so let's open this bad boy and see what is inside. Oh... <laughs> I really wanted to get something that we couldn't already get from the wilderness. We can get both of those from the wilderness. Look, guys, it's not what inside. <laughs> it's not what is inside. It's just we did one. We did one, all right? After that clue casket, we've got to get ourselves another one. But first, I needed to take a little break to reset, and that's going to be 87 Slayer. On a normal account, that's an absolutely huge level for cracking. Unfortunately, not for us, but still a nice level to see. Cheeky, coming in with 80 defence and our survivability just increased. Always a lovely drop to see. Oh, <laughs> oh boys, up the old Revadori Dingles and we get an amulet of Avarice. I know it's twice as rare as the weapons, but when you're hunting that chain mace and you so badly want it, just knowing it's on the same drop table, it's a painful one. Maybe we'll just leave it there. Nah, let's grab him. <laughs> yeah, alright then, mate. Uh, yep. <laughs> Look at those prayer points, very nearly got smited for the old crossbow. You might have noticed that we haven't cashed in any Laranial keys in quite some time. Well, I've still been chunking through Wilderness Slayer. I just wanted to hit ourselves 100 keys, and that day has come today. We do already have full Dagenhai, but the resources we can get from there are super useful for us. The rates of any piece of Dagenhai is 1 in 85, so I'm really hoping that we might just see one of those as well. Not even going to lie, boys, I definitely don't have the sack to be taking the full 100, so we're going to take 25 at a time, but let the lootations roll in. Oh, hello there! And for those curious folk among you, this is all the lootations we got. So we've got the Duke Dagenhai body, which is a four million pounds. Um, a load of uncuts, which we were going to use towards crafting. We want to get level 80 for that glory, obviously. Um, a load of stuff for smithing supplies. We want to get 85 smithing. Uh, we've got some raw fish that we can get our cooking level up with, because that's pretty darn difficult to get up with in the wilderness. And then some of it's that aren't so useful, uh, like the seeds and stuff. Got a couple of alcohols, but we got billions in the bank, so we don't really need that. And uh, it's, it's, it's worth a total of... Uh, 17.6666666 mil. Here we are boys, we have another five hard clue steps all in the wilderness. I'm obviously hoping again that we get a back to back wilderness step or it's a five clue step or less. This took an absolutely unreal amount of time. Right then, so we've brought them all back to the Ferox Enclave. First one's going to be up by the old uh, King Black Dragon. So we've had that clue before, so that shouldn't be too difficult to get to. Uh, next clue that we've got is going to be under the um, Sapphire Spawn up at the Spider's Nest. So we can uh, get to that one. That's near the Rev uh, Cave Telly, so that one shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, the next clue that we've got within the wilderness is going to be Rogue's Castle. That one's slightly harder to get to. Oh. Let's not close that down. Let's actually uh, click on it, shall we? Um, it's going to be up by the Rogue's Castle. I can use the Obelisk to that one. Um, I can't use the Obelisk redirection, so I'll just grab, jump on the main or something to redirect it up there. Should be able to, but uh, yeah, silly wilderness diaries mean that uh, half the content is outside of the wilderness. Um, that's going to be another Rogue's Castle, so we can do those ones back to back. So we can uh, jump back up there and do that one. And the final clue that we've got that is within the wilderness is going to be um, the Demonic Ruins, which again is just going to be a obelisk up there. And uh, yeah, do that one up there. I've been tracking the how hounds I've been killing for each clue or each casket. The first casket took me 928 how hounds and 34 clues before finding the five wilderness steps. I'm averaging about 70 kills per hour with having to bank and PKs coming things. So uh, yeah, that first casket took me about 13 hours. 
This second lot of five wheelie steps was way longer. I did mess up a few times and in total I lost four wilderness step clues so that really didn't help but it took me 2011 hellhounds to get this second casket. Yeah, that's nearly 29 hours and 65 clues before we got the five wilderness steps. As I say that is slightly skewed by me messing up and I did get really unlucky on the wilderness steps but as you can imagine the update of not having to stay logged in and doing it in one stint made this way more possible than it would have ever been. Second step, just finishing up the Zamorok Wizard. Is it going to be a back-to-back -back wilderness step for the guaranteed casket? Uh, Nightmare Arena, that is not the wilderness. Finishing up the Rogue's Castle step and a, another shot of the back-to-back. -back. Let's have a little look. Uh, Lumberish Guide, oh, things get a little bit risky now. That's not the wilderness. Okay, so you know there's like 29 hours we spent. We could still... I was going to say potentially not get a casket. Um, well, we have got one. That's that's a four-step hard. I kind of just forgot it could be four steps. Um, I was waiting for back-to-back -back or hoping it would be five steps. But, uh, yeah, right. Let's open this bad boy up and see what we can get. Okay, so we went fancy with the first casket, and it was an absolute flop. So let's just open this one up here and see what we can get. Come on, let's have a unique... That is not unique. Again, just some rune items. We can get all of those. I'd have taken some black dehyde. What is that shit? Definitely, definitely worth the time, boys. Definitely. <laughs> oh, thank the Lord. There's our fifth and final wilderness step. Um, I really, really should have had this video out. Um, and I was going to after that second casket. But I couldn't leave you boys with that absolute shit. So, so I had to get ourselves another one. Um, once again, it's taken a bloody long time. But we're really, really hoping we can just grab a unique. Honestly, like a black dehyde body would do me. It would just be an upgrade. Just anything but those bloody rune items. Just to show you that there's no trickery going on in these wilderness productions, let's show you boys these steps to make sure that they are, of course, all wilderness steps. I'd only be cheating myself at the end of the day. I say it took a bloody long time, which it did, but it took way, way, way less time than the last five clues. It took me a total of 591 hellhound kills and 20 clues before getting the five wilderness steps, which only took me about eight hours, which is a far cry from the previous attempt. If it can continue going like this, I will be a very, very happy boy. We didn't actually lose any clues this time. I was paying a bit more attention. It can be really difficult when you've got to drop them every couple of minutes to make sure that you absolutely don't miss any. Let's just pop this clue over here because it's the same as that step and then we can just do them together. And the final clue, uh, what wilderness step is this one? Uh, wilderness agility course. Okay, so that is a bit of a ball ache to get to, but uh, yeah, shouldn't be too difficult with the obelisk. Okay boys, so we're on step 3 and I realised that I boozed up, uh, but I've kind of thought of a solution. I didn't recharge my run, which kind of means that I might not be able to get back to my clues on time, which would be horrible. Um, so my respawn point is the Ferox Enclave, so I'm going to die after I kill this. Oh, oh my god, I almost died too early and put on the wrong prayer there. Um, so I've got really low HP from the Zamorot Mage, I'm going to be digging this one up and go back to the Greater Demon. Um... Oh yes, that's a back-to-back, -back, which means a guaranteed casket. It was getting a little hairy on the um, on the third clue, so if we just die, we've got the clue box, so we'll definitely keep the clue. And I think we've only got four, four right. Oh, hang on, we got five items. That's oh no, we still keep the clue because the clue box. And um, yeah, that means we can definitely get back for our clues. Yes, boys, we've got ourselves another casket. And we've got a spare clue to start the next clue juggling session. Let's just bust this casket open. Come on, any unique will be great. Oh my flipping god, a Zamorak Dehyde Shield. Now that is a unique, and it's a really damn good one. That's actually going to be useful for Callisto. And the two kite shields, three uniques, one clue. Oh, and it's a Magic Longbow, which actually is really good for us, because we haven't got 85 Fletching yet, and I can use that for Callisto as the, um, as the finish off for the special. Now, boys, that is the type of clue that we wanted. Of course we pulled out the Zamorok Dehyde Shield for the little fashion scape at the end there. We are going to jump into the goals in just one second. God, I'm happy with that shield. But first, I just wanted to say I really hope you boys enjoyed the episode. This one took me a hell of a long time. Sorry, it's taken a while to get out. But there is over 50 hours worth of progress in just the clues alone. So if that's not enough to drop me a like and a little subscription if you're not already, I really don't know what is. How is everyone diddling? It's been a while, boys and girls, but it feels good to be back. If you're wondering where I've been, I did put out a community post, or maybe you're just like, oh yeah, forgot this fella existed. I can't say I played much whilst I've been real lifing, but I did jump on at times and did some AFK howhounds for some clue juggling and some thieving exploration, so you haven't missed too much from what I've actually recorded. So, 
The more eager-eyed among you may have noticed that we have three beautiful hard clue caskets in the bank ready to pop open. But not just yet. So we ended the last episode on about three and a half thousand Hellhounds kills for our free caskets. Well, we're a little bit over 8k now. I did accidentally open one casket, not that it gave us much stuff of value, but that does mean that we've killed nearly 5,000 Hellhounds for four caskets. Which, to be fair, is a fair few, but it's been something that's been nice and AFK whilst they've been pretty busy. So, goals for this episode. Well, as much as I love the mass slaughter of the Devil Dogs, I'd like another way to get hard clues for my hard clue juggling. So, I want to work towards 84 Thieving for the Rogue's Chest. They provide some pretty nice supplies along with hard clues at a rather nifty rate. Those three hard caskets that we have in the bank, well, I'd, I'd like to open them at Thieving Milestones, you know, just to keep the grind fresh. Now we're all nicely caught up, let's crack on with the live stuff. So, we started off even by pickpocketing rogues. Whilst my thieving is in the low 40s, it's absolutely terrible. I'm just getting continually caught, so we're averaging about 22k per hour. In terms of wilderness skilling rates, this isn't necessarily the worst I've had. However, I was pretty eager to try and find a better method. I explored various places where there are chests, drawers and gates that all give XP and thieving, but none were really worth doing until I found one particular chest at the pirate hideout. There are lots of chests in the pirate's hideout that give XP, but most of them are very small amounts, apart from the two on the southern wall after I did some testing. One of these chests gives 25 XP, but it does give a nature rune every time. The other chest, however, gives 125 XP per steal. So after doing some testing, I found I was able to get 31k XP an hour, which is far better than our 22k at Rogues, if I just kept hopping and stealing from the chest that gave 125 XP. So that was going to be our best option going forward. I did some testing with the other chest as well, stealing from both I was able to get 26k XP per hour and stealing from the one with the nature rune in I was able to get 6.2k XP per hour which is pretty terrible but you would also get 250 natures an hour. I feel at the start of my account this probably would have been my preferred option as runes and cash were pretty hard to come by. This method hasn't been too bad and there we have 60 thieving. It could very well be worthwhile going back and exploring the rogues now though. Before continuing on with Thieving, I needed some AFK time, so we AFK'd some clue scrolls. First one is going to be in the deep wilderness in the ruins area. The next one is going to be in the wilderness uh, desert camp west of the resource area. Third clue scroll we've got, that one is, uh, that's actually in the resource centre, or near the resource centre, near the Magic Axe Hut. So all, all of these are pretty deep so far. This one is the Agility Wilderness course, that's probably the last one I'll do, because it's um, so far away, it might be hard to get back for the other clue scrolls. And the final one is um, East Dr Green Dragons, which is really easy to get to. Okay then, let's dig up this first one, see if it's back-to-back -back for a guaranteed casket. It's not a back-to-back, -back because the desert is not in the wilderness. Just finish up this Zamrock Mage, we only need one Wilderness Step for a guaranteed casket, because obviously we've got five clues. So, could this be the guaranteed casket? Oof, Edgeville, that is very very close, but not the Wilderness. Okay then, this is going to be step number three. Let's see if this one's going to be a Wilderness Step. It's not, we could still get a four or five um, step casket, or a Wildy Step though, so I'm pretty hopeful. Okay, this is going to be step number four, so this could potentially be a casket. I hate it when I get down to my last couple of clues without a back-to-back, -back. I'd rather get an early back-to-back, -back. but, uh, ah, damn, it's not a casket, and it's not a um, wilderness step. It all comes down to the last clue. So far, I've got a back-to-back -back pretty much every time I've done this, so, uh, yeah, let's hope we get lucky on the last clue and get a five-step casket, because that's going to be really painful, if not, or a back-to-back -back wilderness step. As I've run my raggedy ass out to the old uh, Wilderness Agility course, which we've done about 3,500 laps of, or 3,500 on the counter, I'm starting to ponder, um, is five steps the way to go? I think it is, because I think the the odds of not getting a Wilderness back-to-back -back full stop within any of our five clues, or getting a four or five clue casket, is pretty low. I think that... Uh, yeah, we'd have to be pretty unlucky not to get the five-step casket now and not have a single wilderness back-to-back. -back. But we're about to find out whether we are unlucky or whether Jaggett's can be kind. Just give us a casket. Come on, casket, casket. Ca oh, my days, it's a clue. Please, please be a back-to-back. -back. Okay, so if it's a wilderness one, we're absolutely fine, and that's a guaranteed casket. Please just be a wilderness one. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, boys, that is pain. That is such pain. 
I'm a weak man, boys. I'm a weak man. I was going to save these for Fever Milestones, and I would have really liked to, but, um... Yeah, after that clue session, I am busting it seems to get some of these open, so let's bust these caskets open and see what we can get. First casket is going to be Black Dehyde Body. Okay, now that is interesting. That is quite the upgrade on our Red Dehyde Body. The problem is, it's not going to protect over much. Um, oh man, when I saw the collection all pop up, I got super excited, but uh, just, just Tybo Annie teleports. Okay, and our final casket, we are after the best Dehyde. What can we get? Oh, that is a big pile of, um, yeah, we uh, we already are able to get all of those items. Okay, three caskets, we can't expect too much. I would have absolutely loved some Blessed Dehyde. Um, the problem with Black Dehyde is it's not going to protect over anything, so plus 31 range on the Red Dehyde, um, and there are defensive bonuses. And on the Black, it's plus 36, and we have better magic defense. I need to have a little think about where I can use that, but uh, yeah, that's quite a big upgrade. We are just about to grab ourselves, there it is, level 65 thieving. Um, although it says 20k, I am averaging actually about 30k, which is about the same as a chess, but I was just getting so sick and tired of world hopping constantly, so we've gone back to rogues. <laughs> as much as I love statically clicking in one spot, I need to mix up the thieving grind with something so I don't go completely insane. We've got 100 spiders, which means venonatas, but our ether stack is absolutely abysmal, which we need for the crossbow. So, we're going to go to Revenant and uh, hopefully land ourselves a cheeky chain mace in the process, that's wishful thinking, eh? Um, we're going to go to Revenant until we've got 100 bracelets and then do the Venonatus task. Ah, shit. Ancestral and all of the goodies. This is going to be a challenging tank. Ice in the fucking veins, mate! Fucking I'll fight you, gun! Send that to your fucking friends! Out fucking played! This is not the sort of progress or level I saw coming from Revs, but it's one that I'm really happy to get, and it's going to be at level 4 Hunter. I may or may not have died a couple of times whilst roaming around the wilderness, and I may or may not need to collect a few more Rage Arena 2 capes. I just want to show you boys how I collect them, as I think it's pretty quick. I use a Revenant Teleport, which takes me right to Lava Maze, where my Zamorok Demon spawns. By the way, boys, did that change? Because it's the same spot for me every time. Is that for everyone, or is that just my account-specific spawn? Anyway, I kill the big bastard, I run his offal to some creep that wants it in the Major Arena bank, and then I rinse and repeat. I've got a sneaky suspicion that Major Arena 2 capes aren't going to be a problem for some time. We've been busy dipping our hands deep inside these bold boys' pockets. That's going to be 70 thieving. Okay, this is going to be a tough one. We've got some Chadosaurus Rex and the Crystal Armor and the big old f bow. So it's going to be a tricky escape. And the Elder Maul, he's got all the goodies, this young man. What the fuck am I? I think our dog sums this up nicely. Yo, straight up, Mr. Wildenader, you're the boy, dude. Speaking of Mr. R. Diddly Dog, he finds us in the caves. And this man has a top-tier PK with a refreshing attitude. So I never mind perishing to his fine hands. We almost got the better of him, but I did mess up the Mithril Seed Walk. Some of his chat told him not to slay me. Cheers, boys. And on this humble occasion, he decided not to pluck himself some finely crafted red dehyde body. <laughs> this man literally noped out. He was like, I'm not getting entangled. I'm not sitting there whilst he talks shit to me. I'm off. Goodbye. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, I was doing something on the side. I didn't even realise I got that. Oh, man. A Tharaman Scepter. That's a duplicate. That's... Yeah, that's not a Vagora's Chain Mace. Um... Okay. Always nice to see a milli on the floor. What's nice in seeing a milli on the floor? Seeing two million on the floor. So, yeah, you know we're only down to um, one crossbow. Well, we log into a world, we actually get hit, and then, uh, yeah, we, we hop worlds, but kind of don't. As you can see, there's the mage there next to us. Um, yeah, this really worried me, but it actually was completely fine. I just hopped worlds. Something I noticed is when they move the Revenant Caves to a two-way exit and entrance, um, something that's worth doing is just running over to the steps and acting like you're going to leave the caves and then don't actually leave. Yeah, it's pretty simple, but the PKs obviously don't want you to get gaps, so leave really quickly and uh, yeah, they just sort of stood outside with their thumb in their ass. Since we've started to work towards Hunter, these genies are really meaningful again, so it's really nice to see. And uh, yeah, with the rub of this lamp, that's going to be a level 5 Hunter. We've nearly got the effort we need for the Venonatus grind, but there's a couple more preps things that we need to do. We need some more supplies, but also we need some more magic gear for the old uh, Entangling Log when we need it. So we're going to go up to the Chaos Fanatic, give this Black Dehyde body a whirl, and grab some Mage gear. 
So taking our black dehyde body up here wasn't actually as clever as I thought because it's not as easy escape as I remember. Obviously with the most recent wilderness updates, um, NPCs no longer PJ you, so it used to be a super easy escape here. You would just wait for the Fnatic to respawn and he would tag off the peak air. As you can see I'm trying to get around the Fnatic so he can tag off the peak air. Um, yeah, NPCs don't take priority anymore so that was a really silly thing to do. But as any seasoned escapologist knows, you don't just bring the one form of escape, so we use the old and classic entangler log and still manage to get away and keep our black dehyde body. Whilst up at the Fnatic, he dropped us a hard clue scroll, and that is a wilderness step, which means we can keep that for our next clue juggling session. Ooh, a little malediction shard. We just need one from a Scorpio task, and then we'll be able to make our third malediction ward. We were really close to 800 Fnatic kills, as you can see we've only got 100 charges left on the bow, so cut that pretty fine. Um, but yeah, it's going to be KC 800, and as you can see we've got some Split Bark and some Zamrock in there, so uh, yeah, we can use that as magic gear when we need to do the old Entangling Log. We have been just about scraping by on supplies, so we've been smashing through some LMS, the old pew pew with the DDS, a big shudomp with the AGS, got to give the old big bally boy some action. The way I play LMS, Derox is my favourite upgrade. We slapped a couple of boaty numbers, you stupid ginger prick, and we won a few games. In case anybody is wondering, this is my LMS stats. Yeah, we've played a few games. Um, Alright, our win rate isn't the best, but it does what we need to do. And uh, yeah, as a wilderness only account, blighted items are my bread and butter. So we're going to grab ourselves some blighted anglerfish, probably some blighted quams, and some blighted super restores. It's really nice being wilderness only that I'm able to use... Well, blighted items is normal food, really. I forget that they're not normal food because I spend all my time in the wilderness. So let's pick up some blighted restores, uh, leave 100 points in the bank, and uh, yeah, that's the supplies fully restored. I'm going to take my black dehyde body to the spider's task. Yeah, it's pretty risky, and we might very well lose it. As you can see, we now have 100 bracelets, which is really useful. But there's no point in me collecting uh, dust on my black dehyde body in the banks. And really, we're holding out for one of the blessed items. So let's tear these up. That's going to be 25,000 defer, and uh, yeah, see what we can do to the big old spider. The only thing you need to be able to escape is some entangle pouches in your pocket, some bravery in your heart, and some very, very speedy legs. Just keep on running. KC of this big spider is going to be KC 1200, a 557 kill. Um, yeah, that's because I had to reload twice. Um, I'm not bad, I promise. It, the kills don't normally take me that long. Haha, <laughs> see? Told you I wasn't bad. 53 second kill, that's incredibly fast actually, but just two kills later. 60 Onyx Bolt Tips, that's going to be some money. Ooh, hello, haven't been doing much Wilderness Slayer, so miss the sight of these little fellas. With 52 spiders left on the task, that's another Laren's Key. Well... Hello, it's a fair few of you boys. Uh, there's going to be absolutely no escape from this one, so that is going to be a big old GF to the Black Dehyde body. Asking to be put in the vid and one calling me a tramp. Come on, boys, you've got to unify that trash talk approach. Jagex, remove dragon picks from the wilderness. My knobbly knees are clacking together at the thought of it. But seriously, that's like dragon pick number 12 or something. Kill of this big spider is going to be the task over. 1286 killed, and we still don't have the trees in the swing, so it won't be all that long before we come up to three times the drop rate. I think what I might do is, I'm quite enjoying myself up here, is go to 1300kc. Okay, yep, I'll admit it. Doing an extra few kills was an absolutely terrible decision. But, you know, fair ploy, boys. You're uh, pretty well organised with your D spears and your AGSs and whatnot, and uh, good fight. Hello, guys, and welcome to episode 5, season 2 of Wildenator. If you haven't watched any of the previous episodes, I highly recommend you do because it will show you the journey that led to the manimal that you see stood before you right now. So, main goal of this episode is to finally be able to feed from that rogue's chest, requiring 84 thieving, which means sticking my hands in many bold men's pockets to see what lootations and XP I can gain. Funny looking pockets you're reaching into there, Wilder. Hmm? Eh? Hmm? Hmm? Coming in with 76 thieving. Not that I'm really risking anything whilst thieving up here at all, but when the PKs get on me, I like to tease them a little bit, and we play a game of Steroulette.
We're now at a thieving level where we're able to sort of maintain 40k XP now, which is pretty nice. And we're about to grab ourselves level 77 thieving. Yeah, um, I think if we even get to the stairs on this one, we're probably going to lose. Um, it might not be our night for stair roulette tonight. The house doesn't always win, but uh, yeah, it's pretty much over. Enjoy your 9.6k lat and a good fight. Alright, mate, that'll be 78. And we are just about to grab ourselves, level 79 thieving, 168k today, so uh, yeah, nice bit of thieving today. Ooh, 1,600 total as well. It's pretty beefy, isn't it? It's pretty nice here as uh, wilderness only levels. Pretty happy with that one. A big naughty level coming in, lads, and that's going to be level 80. Decided, after getting level 80, to take a small break from thieving and do some revenants, as we are still after that chain mace and always in need of effort. And this young lad gets on us. Let's see how this one goes. Very short is how it went boys, but we did get a um, XP lamp and we put on Hunter for level 6. We are still trying to get ourselves to be able to catch the first level of Impling. I needed some downtime, so I decided to try to do some clue juggling, and we got ourselves a trove of parchment. We've also got a clue score on the ground, so let's see if this is a wilderness step. It is a wilderness step, which means we now have two to clue juggle with, so uh, yeah, let's see if we can get a couple more and hopefully get ourselves a casket. We have been attacked, but to be honest, the best thing to do is just to redrop our clue scrolls and allow ourselves to die. And we do actually have time to be able to bank and run back for the next trip, so yeah, best thing is just to let ourselves die. That will be another 1.4 million to the bank in the form of a tro diddly over parchment. Ah, so it seems a, another guy is on us. Um, once again, the best thing for us to do to be able to keep the clues is just wait for them to tick down, and then when we nearly die, we just redrop them so we have time to run from the enclave. Just take off the protection bear so we can die as quickly as possible. I do bring a little bit of food in case a team comes, and I might need to eat some food in order to be able to pick up and drop my clue scrolls in order to reset them. Uh, but yeah, no real big loss. It's a couple of hundred K, but we get to keep our claws, which is the most important thing. This one seems to take an absolute age, but that is now three wilderness steps. Clue juggling for hours and hours can be quite concentration intensive, and as you can see in the top left hand corner, uh, we lost one of the clues and we're about to potentially lose our other two clues. This is going to be super, super close. Um, let's see if we can at least get one of them maybe and try and restart the cycle. There's one. And okay, so we did manage to get both clues, but yeah, we are back to two. Alrighty then, we got another hard clue on the ground. Let's see if it's a wieldy step. The reason that I'm recording is because we've actually got a lamp and this is going to be uh, put onto Hunter. And this is going to be uh, getting ourselves level 7 Hunter. Let's just get away from these hellhounds so it doesn't interrupt. And that is level 7. And let's see, can it be the Nublé and a wilderness hard clue? Okay, so that kind of is if we had access to blue eyed Vams, which we don't. I actually pondered over whether I should allow myself blue dehyde van braces just for the stash unit just to be able to do this clue. I actually put out a poll and you guys were pretty supportive which I do appreciate. However, I've been so strict with my restrictions and anything that I've allowed has really really changed the account for better content and just you know for me to be able to put out better videos and make it more enjoyable. Um, and I don't really want to be making many restrictions just for kind of easy escapes, so we decided in the end to just drop the clue and not allow the van braces. We got attacked by a guy who is a bit of a lower level and we just come back with a full set of restores, so natural instinct is like to run. The clever thing is just to die, let's face it, so you don't risk losing your clues. Um, but I was a bit frustrated, so I was like, right, let's give this guy the run around, see what we can do, see if we can get away. And uh, yeah, it's pretty funny because he hit quite a few zeros and we very, very, very nearly got away. We got back round to be able to pick up and drop our clues. Um, but uh, yeah, he found us and just managed to hit the final four before we could get the log. Oh. 
I'd like this moment cemented in one of my videos. Gedrick Ged, a G Daddy, maxing his account. Anyone in the CC will know Ged. He's an absolute legend. Anyone not in the CC, get in the CC. We have a few of the lads out here to celebrate, including Russi, hashtag one completionist for irons, just the sort of calibre we bring to this CC. But no, seriously, Ged, massive congratulations, you absolute king, and thanks for bringing it to the enclave. We can't keep procrastinating this forever, um, and we are just about to get ourselves level 81 thieving. I really do want to get to level 84, so we're able to do this rogues chest. 255k XP gains a day, definitely one of my bigger thieving days. You know, I've got a lot of commitments outside making videos as well, and also clicking bold men's heads is not the most, uh, not the most favourable content. But here we are, we're about to get ourselves level 82 thieving. Okay, yes, I know, I'm King Procrastinator, but I do try and do the more dangerous stuff at the less busy times of the day. Jack X with telling us to get back to the theme grind and back to the theme grind we got and we're about to grab ourselves level 83 in 3, 2, 1, oh there we go, level 83. If you look at the chat box I just had a little uh, run in with a maxed hardcore in level 52 wilderness in multi on his own. Like, you're right little buddy, <laughs> you, honestly the balls on that guy. As you can see, we are incredibly close to level 84 thieving. On an account like this, skilling pets aren't exactly the plan, but I did do over 72,000 pickpockets, and at a rate of 1 in 257,000, I had about a 30% chance of the Rocky, so held out a little bit of hope. But, alas, it was not to be. But there it is, boys and girls, level 84 thieving. Here we go, boys. The rogue's chest. We can finally steal from it. I'm wearing Dagon Hires. It gives magic bonus if we encounter singles PK as I can entangle them. But more importantly, it has prayer bonus to help us keep protect from melee up, which we will need. The main reason we've done this grind is for the 1 in 99 chance at Hard Clue. But it has tons of other useful drops as well. Raw tuna. It can be quite hard to come by raw food. Uh, really just from Laran Keys. Um, and getting to level 90 for Dark Crabs is huge. So this will be a massive chunk of that XP. Cut diamonds and dragon stones for jewellery and bolt tips. Uncuts I can use to level crafting. We still need level 80 for the glories. Chaos and death runes are always welcomed. Ores as we still need 85 smithing for rune. And sharks it could be a decent source of food instead of using all our LMS points. Okay, so we're 11 chests in and we got our first hard clue. That's um, really nice to see. I had a horrible feeling I was going to be really dry. Oh, it's not a wilderness step, uh, but yeah, we're only 11 in. Boys, what even is this? Five chests later we get another hard clue scroll. Hopefully it's a wieldy step. Um, oh, coordinates often are. Um, that is not, but as you can see, our other clue's still on the ground. Uh, yeah, literally like two minutes after. Are we going to have our first wilderness step? We are not, but I seriously cannot complain. I've been here two minutes. Look at that XP. 36 chests, three clues. <laughs> um, what is going on? That's clue number four. And that is a wilderness step, our first wilderness step. Um, less than 100 chests, we've done 91 chests, and we currently have four clue scrolls. I'm sure that'll slow down soon, but uh, yeah, that, oh, pff, that's fantastic. Here's another clue. Um, let's see if it's a wildy step to go with the one that we've currently got. Um, it isn't, but they are coming in thick and fast. I had a horrible feeling that I was going to get Jagexed on this, and like the rate would just be like one in like 300 or something. I don't really know why, but... Uh, yeah, so far the 1 in 99 rate seems very, very plausible because, uh, yeah, we're well above that. Okay, so we've got ourselves another clue scroll. Let's see if this one is a second wilderness step. Um, it's not. 
Um, I assume in the future I probably won't show you every clue, but I think it's kind of nice to begin with to see what sort of rates I'm getting wieldy clues and what rates I'm getting clues in general. Due to not having run restore, we can only steal from two of the chests, the two that are closest to each other. Guides I watched suggested three, but I personally don't even see with run restore how that's optimal being so far away. I'm only waiting for the second chest to restock for like a second, but nevertheless, our rates personally are going to be about 34.6k an hour it seems, which is 346 chests. That's without PKs or banking, but it does mean if we sort of stick around those rates, we're going to be looking at a clue scroll every 20 minutes. I have a 15% chance of that being a wieldy step or a sort of one in every six and a half clues, which does mean we should be looking at a wieldy step every two hours. And if I go for five steps, it will hopefully be a casket in about 10 hours, which honestly is not too bad at all. Got ourselves a lamp whilst up at the chest, going to slam that on Hunter, and that is going to be level eight Hunter. Nope, nope. Okay, so first time getting attacked up here. Um, similarly to the Hellhounds, I just want to re-drop my clues ideally to make sure that they uh, don't despawn. I give myself the most time. Um, if it's a single PK, I should just be able to entangle and log around the corner um, away from the guards. And you should just be able to log from a single PK as long as you land the entangle. Oh, but hang on, he has actually got a mate. Um, two of them uh, are not going to be able to get the entangle off and the log in time so best bet is probably just to die to them both and then uh, get back as quickly as possible and re-pick up the clue scrolls okay so something we haven't really factored in is um we don't have the wilderness hard diaries which means we can't redirect the obelisk to where we want to go we have all of the hard requirements apart from the hunter requirement and uh, yeah i don't even know whether i'll be able to train that when i can get for the, to the first implant spawn so the problem is, is it's very RNG dependent on whether I get back for my clue scrolls or not. Now this is going to be an incredibly frustrating grind, uh, trying to get back for clue scrolls after I've done hours of potentially juggling just to get done over by the obelisk. So I'm going to have a little bit of a think about what I'm going to be able to do for this. Uh, maybe get someone's help or something because yeah, this is going to be really difficult. Um, but yeah, hopefully the obelisk is kind and we'll be able to get back for our clue scrolls. Do I just get, like, really stupid when I put on Dagenhai or something? Um, I realise I'm in a non-plus one world in full Dagenhai. Can't protect item, fully skulled. Yeah, um, so I was risking all of the pieces in the multi-combat zone in level 53 wilderness. For goodness sake. Oh, lovely. That's going to be a third wilderness step. So, obviously, I can't bring infinite prayer restore. I also need room for food. And I want to bring back some loot and bags worth of goodies. So I am going to need to be banking. I don't know how often, but I'd imagine every sort of hour or so. The problem with that is, each time now, because I'm clue juggling, I'm going to have to individually run each clue scroll to the edge of the obelisk from the chest. And then take the teleportation back to the ferret's enclave. Bank and then run each clue back from the obelisk back to the chest. Now, in itself, this isn't too bad. You know, this can be done in sort of 10 to 15 minutes. However, again, it's the RNG with the obelisk. So let's hope that we don't get jagexed. Nope, nope. Okay, because we're in season two, we are able to enter the abyss from the wilderness. I'm unsure whether I fact this into clue scrolls that I can do, but uh, yeah, that's going to be number four. Okay, so we suspected this might happen. Um, as you can see on the clue scroll counters, we now have less than 20 seconds. Um, I've just been unable to get the right teleport. If I can't get it this time, I'm going to log out and see whether that resets the timer. I don't think it does, but uh, yeah, if it does, it's going to make it a lot easier. But if not, we've probably just lost our clues. Oh, boys, the logout trick didn't work. Um, we took one with us. So uh, yeah, good fight free clue scrolls. We've lost a total of five clue scrolls in this episode now, and that's easy to get your head down. But we've learned the mechanic, the logout doesn't work. We also know that we need to tailor the obelisk, so we're going to get a pal to help us out with that. So as long as we learn from these things and keep our head up, we'll be all right. So let's get back, let's get some of these clue scrolls, and it will be all so sweet when we finally do get that casket. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, so I've just dropped that clue scroll and I've got a back-to-back. -back. Is it a wieldy step on the back-to-back, -back, though? It's another nope. Now, that one is a wieldy step, and that was very nearly another back-to-back -back on the uh, pickpocket of the chests. Um, I'm probably just going to show the wilderness steps now, uh, otherwise, matey boy's going to be noping your ears off all night. That's going to be a, another wilderness step, and that's a nice one to get just outside the enclave. Right, we learned from our mistakes, so we've got Mr. Key here to help us with um, the obelisk teleportation, so he can just direct it to 13, and then back to 50, which means we'll definitely get back in time for these beautiful clue scrolls. 
honestly, nice seeing these supplies come in. We've got supplies in the inventory and nearly 700k worth in the bag. And uh, yeah, these are all going to get used and be really useful. Hey, hey, that's going to be wilderness step number four. Really nice to get that's down by the green dragons. <laughs> when I start getting this many, I'm so paranoid about getting PK'd and not able to get back for them. But uh, let's get this fifth one and get the hell out of here. And there she blows, boys. Clue scroll number five. Um, yeah, if it's a six-step casket with no back-to-back -back wilderness, I'm definitely going to cry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, hopefully not. Let's hopefully run all of these clues over to the enclave and claim our casket. All of our sweet little paper babies back to the enclave. Let's have a look at the first one and see what it's going to be. It's going to be uh, the North Ruins. Is How high up is that one? Um, oh, so it's just by the Revenant Cave Teleport. That's going to be super easy to get to. So if this is a back-to-back -back first clue, that means it's a guaranteed casket, uh, but no, that is not a wooden step. Second step, are you going to be a back-to-back -back? Uh, fossil island? That is not located within the wilderness. Okay, this is going to be step number three. Um, hopefully this is a wilderness one because I really, really want this casket. That's not a pyramid plunder. Oh, this is where it starts to get difficult. Oh, that's not either, which takes us down to our last clue scroll. So that has to be back to back or the casket. Otherwise, this is all for nothing and I will be going fully in Beale. Here we go boys, it's the moment of do or die has tens of hours been gone to waste. Back to back or casket? Yes, it is the hard clue casket. I am so chuffed about that. Right, let's see what goodies await us. Right then boys, here we go. <laughs> what is that? What's under the collection log pop up? I didn't see that top row. 14 green firelighters, guffic page, rune kite, rune legs and purple sweets. Okay, so that's two collection slots um, ticked off. That's something, right? Oh, we've got a third. What's that? The purple sweets as well. Three collection logs ticked off because we've only done eight hard clue scrolls. Look boys, it's not about the treasure at the end. It's about the journey that we went on together. Eventually we will hit something really good and uh, yeah, these sort of clue scrolls are expected and when we do hit those uh, jackpot clue scrolls, we're going to be so thankful. Hello guys and welcome to episode 6 of season 2 of the Wilderness Only Iron Man series. As you can see, we are kicking things off with a pretty a juicy looking inventory and as you can see in the chat box, um, those high elk values are what we're actually going to be doing and the reason that we're going to be high elk on all of these is because this episode, the main goal that I want to work towards is 89 agility, which is a pretty big one and that is for the hard revenant shortcut that's going to help us out so much. I thought I'd show you the rest of the elks I've got from revs, uh, yeah, like pretty close to 200 mil, 187 mil worth of Alps. We won't be doing the armors, we'll just be doing the bolts and the battle staff, and the reason behind that is because I'd love to get like a thousand sets of rune armor, I just think that'd be really cool. And let's face it, we don't need the money. But without any further ado, let's get on with this and get ourselves some agility levels. Okay, so I thought I'd do an hour testing just to see what sort of rates we're able to get here. Um, full concentration and 42k an hour. That's that's pretty damn good for wilderness skill in, so I'm pretty happy with that. So uh, yeah, hopefully we can fly past some of these levels. Okay, so the first level we get isn't actually going to be an agility level, it's going to be a hunter level from the lamp. Um, we're still working towards that 27, I think it is, to be able to bear hand the first type of implin to see if it does fly in the wilderness and whether it's a viable method of training our hunter. So we're getting very close to approaching our first level, which is going to be 83 agility. I do really enjoy the wilderness course, I find it really quite nice and relaxed. There's some nice spots that I can keep alking. 
Um, the only downside to this course is it's energy dependent. Obviously, all rooftop courses these days uh, don't require any sort of energy because you get it back from each obstacle or something like that. Um, but with the Wilderness course, the rates would be a lot higher if I did have run energy. But, you know, it's not the end of the world. As I said, the rates are okay. There's some nice spots in which we can elk. And we are just about to get ourselves our first level of 83 agility. Cool little milestone C here. That's going to be a lap 4000 at the Wilderness Agility course. Here we go, boys. Another level coming in. That's going to be a level 84. After many, many more hours of running around in circles, we've got a really nice level coming in here. Really nice one to see. And that's going to be a level 85 agility. Decided to take ourselves a well-earned break up from the Wilderness Agility course. And we're picking ourselves up a cheeky little one mil from the Money Ghosts. Ho, ho, ho. That is always such a nice one to see. We are eating tonight, boys. Bit of a backstory on this man. Uh, this guy was giving me a little bit of a jip and uh, following me around a little bit. We did escape him a few times. This was one very close attempt because apparently I'm incapable of using F keys or uh, putting on protect from melee. We did manage to combo eat our way out of it. But yeah, that was a pretty close one. But uh, yeah, in all honesty, PKs often get a bad rap. But this man had a little bit of a foul mouth. But in this particular tussle, we did manage to uh, soak up all of his hits and manage to get the entangle and log out. As you can see, this man had a very, very sharp tongue. Uh, but uh, yeah, we nearly actually tanked a full TB of his. And I think that just would have been the final straw for him to blow his head off. But he did get us with eight seconds left on the TB. And uh, yeah, a good fight to the man. Because let's face it, boys, he really, really needed that one, didn't he? I'm rich and I'm dead sexy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I needed some downtime, some more chill time, um, so we've decided to do some hellhounds for clues. Is this going to be a wilderness step? It's not a wilderness step, but uh, yeah, hopefully we can pick up a couple here and have a go at some juggling. Nope. Nope. Oh, nice. Trodedly over parchment. A hey, first wildy step. Nope. Okay, so that's bird uh, not in the wilderness. Okay, AFK time over. We didn't have too much luck with the uh, Wilderness Clue juggling um, clues. However, we did bank one step for the next time we do a session. Back to the agility grind with a really nice milestone coming in here. That's going to be 5,000 Wilderness Agility laps. We finished all of our Alk Agility and uh, done all our Battle Staffs and Onyx Bolts, which now means that we have a very, very juicy 30 mil cash stack. Thank you very much, Mr. Genie. I wish for some Hunter XP. Thank you very much. Wilderness Agility Course, best hunter XP guaranteed. Pretty damn strong agility day today up at the course, as you can see, 226,000 XP gained, and we are finally getting ourselves level 86 agility. 6,000 agility laps. 87 agility! The Wilderness Agility Hunter course once again prevails, and that's going to be a level 13 hunter. As you're probably aware, LMS got some extra loads out from just the main account. You can now do Azurkas and one defense pures, so it spices things up quite nicely. You can also choose the spell book that you want to do. On pures, you can only have um, Ancients or Normals, but on every other account, you can also have Lunars, which is one that I choose because I'm a stinky Bolt Rag Adventure. Everyone is now furiously disliking the video. You also have extra lootations inside the keys. Mains can now get some uh, pretty OP stuff like uh, Ancestral, Opal Boats, things like that. Zerkers, uh, I assume what's the best of them. Things like Inquisitors, Nightmare Staff and all that sort of thing. You can even get Third Age on those actually. And then Pures, well you just run about completely naked because uh, yeah, you forgot to train defence. Oh fine, I suppose you could have a Fremenic Kill or some Spike Manacles if you wanted to. Well, let's be having some fun and roll the LMS clips.
For anyone interested, these are the LMS stats. Um, we've got a big smithing grind to do in the future, and we need a load of loot bags for that, if anyone remembers my um, smithing method. So I'm trying to stack the points as much as possible, and I'd love to get that 1,000 wing cape one day. Someone as bad at me as LMS to uh, get one of the rarest capes in the game would be wonderful. Steady on there, lad. Running out of nowhere to try and slice my fucking head off. Cheeky little one mil emblem coming up at the Revenants. Ooh, very nice. That's another one mil emb. Um, yeah, just a couple of kills after the last one. And uh, yeah, we didn't even bank. So two mil emblems in the big. Ooh, look at that one. That is some big money. Um, <laughs> the OGs remember when I dropped my first ever eight million emblem for a thumbnail. Not this time. Straight in the bag. Amulet of Avarice drop. Um, that's the second because we did have to. Oh, hang on. There's a PK there. Let's just get out of here. Um, oh, you can't teleport straight away because it's a stupid update. Jagex made. Let's get with this one. Um, okay. I reckon if, I wonder if anyone's ever owned an Avrise for less than about 30 seconds. Oh no. We need a little bit more downtime, so we decided to go back to the clue juggling, and uh, that's a wilderness step, which is going to be a wildy step number two. Right, we have gained over 200k defense XP with just one wilderness step. We currently have two clue scrolls on the floor. Surely, surely one of these two clue scrolls is um, a wilderness step. Going to look at the first one, and um, yeah, no, Varrock sewers. Varrock sewers is 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 not in the wilderness. Last time I checked, it is in Edgeville, which is pretty close. Come on, please be a wilderness step for um for three, because uh, yeah, three. That's pretty close to five, where we can actually have a go at the casket. So please be a wilderness step. Ah, oh, it's not okay. So we've got another clue on the ground, and that means another roll of the dice. Um, if this one isn't a wilderness step, I think we're just going to go to the chests. Yeah, no, that's not a wilderness step. Um, we're over 11,000 KC on the Hellhounds. Um, but yeah, I fancy doing something a bit more interactive. So we're going to go up to the rogue's chest. Somebody commented on one of my last videos when I was juggling up here. In fact, I've had a few useful tips for these clue scrolls. Um, you could, I could use an alt and actually tag off the rogue so I wouldn't have to use prayer. That got me thinking. Um, I don't really want to use an alt, but I do have a dragon spear. So I did some testing with uh, whether I, where I can push these two with the Dragon Spear. And uh, yeah, quite a lot of the rows I can actually push into this room. So if we can figure out what we do with the other ones, we may possibly be able to feed these without using any prayer. That would be really useful because it means that we wouldn't have to bank for potions and stuff, which would just make the whole juggling grind so much easier. Right, there's one rogue that I can't seem to get in that room. He de when I get too much that way he comes from the other side so i'm thinking i uh, what i've tried doing is getting him as far as he'll possibly go luring him over and then pushing him out of his zone that he should normally be in um but he does walk back so uh, i'm having a bit of trouble with this one rogue but uh, i'm sure we'll manage to figure it out 
Okay, so um, rather than trying to push them to the side they can't go, I did manage to trap one of these two in this room, um, although it didn't just work then, so now I'm a little bit confused. I swear that I stood there and pushed him. Um, so we need to try and work this out. If I can get him to stand there, and then I can surely just... He doesn't go any further than that. So if I just run behind him, then surely we can... Um, I'm going to need to run on. Surely we can just poke him in. And then that just leaves one rogue, which, to be honest, wouldn't be too bad, because he runs back when I open the right chest anyway. So I could just flick prayer when he's on me on the left chest um, and not have to do it on the right um, that was weird that I just walked in to shut the door but yeah as you can see I can poke him in there and then just deal with the one rogue I've got four in the um, east side and uh, yeah this one in the west side and then I can just prayer flick the last one okay so this is set up well to be able to show you so he can attack me there on the left chest so I just need to um, throw up the protect melee for that one but then as soon as I steal from this one it's out of his aggro zone I guess so he just kind of retreats back Oh my god, and I got a clue scroll while I was showing you that. Um, okay, so let's have a look whether that's a wilderness step in a minute. But yeah, as you can see, when I pickpocket from this one, he doesn't come back for a while. So for sort of like 10 to 20 chests, I can just get it pickpocketed. Um, that's the wilderness step anyway, so it's not that one. That's the other wilderness step. So is this final clue, oh, whilst I threw up the recorder just to show that, a wilderness step? Ah, oh, it's not. It's a coordinate as well, which often are. Damn it. Nope, nope. Hey, there we go, Black Chin Chompers, that is a wilderness step, and that is clue number three. I kind of forget, because the loot's are nice, and I'm here for the clue scrolls, that uh, the XP's not too bad either, it's uh, over 30k an hour. So, from 84 to 85, it's all from Rose Chest, and uh, there it is, very nice. So, the East Rogues stay in place for as long as, well, until you log out for a couple of minutes. This one you have to keep re in every 20 minutes, but I've got it completely down, though. So, you stand right in front of the door, you go up to this spot, you poke him, there he goes diagonal, and then you poke him through the door. Um, honestly, <laughs> it's embarrassing how long it took me to finally work that out um, as simply as that. But, uh, yeah, that's a really quick one that I have to relaw every 20. Peek here on me. Um, as always, I just need to prioritise the clues. I don't really care about the loot so much. Just need to get away from him. Um, if he's a singles, then I should just be able to grab the entangle and the log. Um, so as long as he doesn't have a friend, we should be able to get our lootations and our clue scrolls out of here. <laughs> Joker. Joker's on you, mate. Actually, really glad we got away from that PK because I had a lot more loot than I thought I did. Back up here and with this, just let me relure this guy. And with this method of being able to only bank when I get attacked, um, it's making the clue juggling a whole lot easier. Let's see if this is going to be a wilderness step. Um, it's not, unfortunately. Oh, yes. Honestly, when I open these clues and I see it's a wilderness step, man, it fills me with so much joy. That's now four wilderness steps. Oh, that's a little bit annoying. Um, so actually, when you get two of the same clue, it stops the timer. So what I'll probably have to do is um, drop the other clue just next to it or something so I can get a timer on it. We've still got the timer on the left hand of the screen, but I like to see it next to the clue scroll. That's kind of what I look at when I'm juggling. So we're actually being attacked, um, and as I can see on the mini-map, there is more than one of them. Um, yeah, this is kind of why it's annoying having to drop them in two spots. It means I have to go to two different loot piles to try and juggle them. Uh, let's just be careful that we... Quickly don't, oh, quickly don't die. Okay, so we've re-dropped all of the clues. Um, yeah, it's a little bit annoying when you lose the supplies, but honestly, the clues are the thing that take ages. Um, so we can just run back up there and grab our clues. So some other trials and tribulations of the clue juggler. Not only does it take ages when we get PKs, um, yeah, when we lose connections. So I downloaded something from Runelite called Unresponsive Cons um, Cursor, and it just helps me sometimes be able to log out before I sort of stay in game. 
Um, I don't know whether anyone else has this issue, but my internet is not good. Um, my area of the UK just isn't well known for good internet anyway. Um, I swear when I watch streams and stuff, people have like super duper internet. Does anybody else have like some ropey ass internet that goes out at least once a day? Oh boys, yes there it is. Clue step number five in the wilderness. Um, obviously six is a guaranteed casket, so I'm going to go for one more. But if it's not a wilderness step, we're just going to do five because it can take hours and hours to get a wilderness step. And uh, yeah, I think we have a pretty good chance with five, so hopefully we can get ourselves a casket. Is it going to be a wildy step? It is not going to be a wildy step, so we are just going to go with the five clues and uh, yeah, stay and pray with five. Okay, so we have all of our beautiful clues back to the enclave. Um, so with five clues, I'm wondering on the percentage and I'm just not clever enough to work it out. So if any boys want to help me out, if we've got any mathematicians among us, but obviously a hard clue can be a four, five or six step. So, assumably, getting five clues would be a 66% chance. But then, of course, with all five clues, we have a chance at the back-to-back. -back. A wilder step is at a 15.2% chance, which is about a one in six in five. So, with the 66% chance, with the five clues out of a possible six, but with the back-to-back -back wilderness being a 15.2% chance from each of them, what is the percent chance that I'm going to get a casket with five clue steps? My God, how the hell do you work that out? Okay, so uh, back to back on first step, be lovely. Oh, Monk Road Top, I'll take that. They're always coming handy at Revs. Um, no, Drainal Village, that's not going to be back to back on the first one. Doing the uh, clue scrolls that we have the same, first of all, so these people must be like, what, he's back doing the same step? Well, they'd be thinking that if they weren't all bloody bots. Hmm, Jagex, hey, hey, hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's see if it's going to be a, a guaranteed casket uh, with a wilderness step. Come on, come on. That's not, unfortunately. Tell you what, some of these uh, deeper steps do get me balls tingling a little bit. I'm going to get back for the clues, so let's just finish them off and uh, dig it up. And I'm going to dig up a, a nice little, uh, nice little wilderness one, I reckon. Oh, it actually is. Oh, well, that never happens. Um, fantastic. That's a guaranteed casket, and it's a really nice step as well. Nice easy step. Don't need you being back to back. Do whatever you want, mate. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter what you are. Let's just teleport out of here. Might not even look at you. No, I'm only joking. Let's see what it is. It is um, not a wilder step, but uh, I don't really care because we've got the guaranteed casket, which is very exciting. Here we go. Just uh, finish this man up. Is this going to be a casket or a clue scroll? Oh, it's going to be a casket, which actually leaves us with a spare clue. So we didn't need it, but it's always nice to have a wildy step in the bank anyway. Here we go, boys. Um, the excitement is killing me. Got me little Scorpio out for some luck. Can he provide us with a bit of luck? Uh, just make sure we're at the CC in case I get anything decent. <laughs> oh, getting something decent was wishful thinking. Scorpio, you're never coming out again. You're useless. Um, look, you know, it's a pretty standard hard clue. It's only frustrating because of how long they take. But we're streamlining how we get clues. That was fairly faultless. Um, we're up to nine hard clues. There's lots of positives to take away from that and uh, eventually we'll land something really useful. Right, that is quite enough procrastination. We said we wanted to get ourselves 89 agility and 89 agility. We will get ourselves. We are just going to be one level away with this level. That's going to be two fat ladies, 88. We're going to have ourselves a, another lap milestone in just a second before we hit the 89 agility. I was thinking, I wonder if anyone's done more agility wilderness um, course laps. I don't really see why anybody would. I think, what is it, 52 to level 60, it's optimal, but pass that is not. But uh, there we go, that's 7,000 laps at the Wilderness Agility course. Oh, boys, this has been a long time coming. Um, 89 Agility is going to be so useful for revs. Final um, lap count is going to be 7665. I'll probably do one more just to uh, make it look cool, because I'm a bit odd and uh, like nice numbers like that. But here we go, boys, level 89 agility finally and it means that we can do the hard revenant cave shortcut <laughs> come on mp cares we have made ourselves nigh on invincible
Hello guys and welcome to Season 2 Episode 7 of the Wilderness Only Iron Man series. So, last episode we got the 89 agility for the Revenant hard shortcut. So we want to do some Revenants in this episode and see if we can't get that chain mace. Our Revenant tab is looking incredibly depleted. Um, we don't have any red dehyde bodies so we're going need to need to go kill the crazy archaeologist. And we don't have any um, mage equipment to be able to entangle and log like the spit bark or the Zamrock robes. And that's going to be a fanatic. So let's crack on with this grind and get some gear. Right then ladies and germs, it's going to be the first kill just so we can see what KC we are starting out on this grind and it's going to be, oh it's a fedora so uh, that's a rare first drop but uh, four, five, six, seven start. Malediction shard number de, and that is on 4602. Oh hello, that's another one, buy one get one free from the KC archaeologist, don't mind if I diddly do. Oh that's a naughty looking little sack there. Easy for you to see. Up to 4,664 kill count. Nice little bag there. Red DI body in there. And grats on the zombie mass. Mr. Raised by cows. And the shard collection grows. Big, beefy bag. So I'm actually clue juggling whilst killing this. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm a beast. Um, and we just got a second clue step. So I'll, let's see if this is a wilderness one. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, whilst collecting red DI bodies. But it's not. What about you, Mr. Clue? Are you going to be a wilderness step? No. No, you're not. Another clue, just two kills later. What? But it's not a wilderness step. Why tickle my balls with all these clues when they're not in the wilderness? You know I need Jagex, you know. You, you know how much time I've spent here. We've been here for, yeah, quite a long time. I was going to go to um, 4,800, but I've run out of supplies, so I think we'll just call this one the last uh, kill. I'm pretty sure I've got some nice supplies. I think I've got a few red dehyde bodies that trip. Three right at the end as well. We were going a bit dry, so um, yeah, we've got plenty of red dehyde bodies to see us through for a while. Oh, damn, Shard. And they're pretty expensive, to be fair to you. Oh, I do feel like a bit of a beast clue juggling whilst um, getting other things ticked off. It's like zero time clue juggling. It's pretty exciting. Unfortunately, here, um, it's going to be really difficult to juggle more than one clue. Oh, we got a second um, wildy step, by the way. So we're actually going to take our two wilderness steps we've gone, go into the rose chest and see if we can't turn this into a casket. Ah, Mr. Clue Scroll, are you a wilderness step? Nope. 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 Oh no, you got to be having a long hard look at yourself after getting done like that, boys! Oh boys, you let me tank you whilst I stood there picking up my clues and re-dropping so we didn't lose them, and then you let me get a little bit of a gap to get through the door, and then rather than attack me, you tried, you tried shutting the door on me, but we managed to get through, and uh, we had a little game of stair roulette, and old wooden it came all on top, and here is what you could have won. I'm lucky. Back to the chest, and we've got a clue actually pretty quickly. Um, but uh, yeah, the pyramid of Soth Haman is not within the wilderness. Ah, the wilderness pirate's heart. This one is a uh, a Bobby Ball Lake to get to, if I'm completely honest. And we've actually got two of those clues, so uh, a little bit annoying. But why well, am I complaining? It's a wilderness step. It's a wilderness step, and that is three or five. Nope. 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 <laughs> Finally! Can we have a cheeky little back-to-back -back show on the road, get this thing done? No, uh, no we cannot. And that's going to be a catch. Let's just have a little run around here. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, not today, sausage. <laughs> the game just stood there. Got to be quick, but let's see what he missed out on. Uh, 1.4 mil, that's quite a bag. The man's back again. I've hopped worlds. Right, he's definitely got it out for me. Let's, um... Money... <laughs> His name's Moneylicious. I refuse to get killed by someone called Moneylicious. There we go. And that's the entangle. It should be an easy escape. Um, why can't I move? I'm pretty sure I wasn't frozen. Okay, I'm not going to be able to log. That's not going to be enough time. Um, get the entangle again. He's already entangled. Oh my diddly. What am I doing? I could just log out. Oh my god, the guard's on me. Right, okay, this is the worst bit of tank I've ever seen. I deserve to die. Right, hang on. Let's just concentrate. So, I'm going to have to get away from the guards because I've actually got a guard on me at the moment. Um... Okay, little DDS. Not too bad to be able to tank one of those. Just keep the uh, prey melee up. I'm not really sure why he's using the DDS when I've got prey melee up, but there we go. Right, catch the freeze. Let's run around here. Make sure that the rogue can't get us. Oh, for goodness sake. That is literally some of the worst tanking anybody has ever done in their life. Um, but yeah, good fight, money delicious. Right, I've been tanking my little pants off, so uh, probably just give me a wieldy step. Or, or, or don't give me one near the lumber yard. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Also completely fine. I'm not upset. You're upset, mate. 
Oh, yes, that is the fifth and final step. Thank you, thank you, Jingle Plocks. Decided to go for one more, and it's not a wilderness step. I was like, we'll just go for one more clue, and if it is a wilderness step, guarantee casket, happy days. If not, it's fine, we'll just go do the clues. So, uh, yeah, five clues. Let's hope we can get a casket. Final bag of goodies from the clue juggling, and, uh, yeah, they're going to come in really useful when we do some of the skilling grinds, but we have got all five of our beautiful clue steps in the enclave safe and sound ready to go. Where is me uh, little clue sign? I swear it was in the uh, graveyard. Oh man, I'm in the wrong shitting graveyard, aren't I? Yep. Right, this is going to be our final clue scroll. So either it's a wilderness back to back or it's a casket, which would be good. Let's blow a little kiss to Jagex for the casket. Come on. Yes, it is the casket. It worked. Let's bust it straight open. <laughs> Let's bust it straight open, he says. Let's risk it in the wilderness, he says. Jagex will reward you with a really good loot. Um, well, that's, that's 10 hard clues, double digit hard clues. You know, every cloud and all that. So you would soften the blow a little bit though. A cheeky little like if you are enjoying it so far. Back to where we were before we started the uh, clue juggling expedition and that's the second odium shard from here. That's a decent bag worth up there and uh, yeah, loads of mage gear in there so that's really nice. Oh, <laughs> I actually saw the collection pop up before I saw what it had dropped. Um, apparently that's our first uh, shield left half. Um, yeah, I don't think we did have one. For a second, small second, I thought that was the pet. You cheeky little fucker! After a uh, little run-in with that PK, we're actually up for... Well, we just had a couple more kills to finish off, because this is a pretty special kill count. That's going to be kill count number 1,000. And that's actually the drop rate of the pets, um, which we don't have. I do want to get to Revenants and test our shortcut. However, with the Wilderness bosses being updated, I wouldn't mind trying to do a little bit of Slayer and see if we can grab one of those tasks. Um, we've got a Great Demon's task, so we're going to do this first, and we just grabbed ourselves a Trevor Parchment. We also have three Darren's Keys, so let's get off to the bank. We've decided to dust off and give the VLS some love because it, uh, it took us a long time to get, didn't it? You know, 50 mil cash and 300 LMS points. Um, it feels quite nice bringing them out, to be honest. Let's see if we can get any decent hits with these specials. A 36, that is not too shabby, to be honest, seeing as I'm um, a 48. I'm in, like, no strength bonus. That's nice. Bonk him on the head, and that is the Great Demon's task finished up. Hey, and just like we wanted, the absolute piece of painting that is Crystalia delivers, and that's going to be 35 Callistos to kill. <laughs> uh, wasn't even recording. First, <laughs> first Callisto kill from Dragon Pickaxe. Bloody eight mil, eight mil. Is, is that actually how much a Dragon Pickaxe is worth? Eight bloody mil. Crikey. Splashed about a million times, so almost definitely gonna die. Yep, there we go. Can't believe I splashed that much in a red skirt and a wooden body. Shocking. This is gonna be the final kill of the um, red spider bukkake party, and it's gonna be for supplies. Why is it always supplies when I don't need them? We're on a Hellhounds task, and we got a lamp, so we're gonna be using that on Hunter. There it is, couldn't find it for a second. That's 130 XP, and that's gonna be a level 14. That's a Hellhounds task, tickety ticked off. Okay, 49 Black Dragons. As per season two, we can kill the uh, King Black Dragon. We haven't done any of that yet, and I thought a nice way to do it would be every time I get a Black Dragon's task, I do that many of the King Black Dragon before I complete the task. Obviously, the um, King Black Dragon kills won't count towards the task, but it'd just be a nice way to get a few kills each time um, without absolutely camping it. And, uh, yeah, let's see if we can get some kills. Okay, boys, so I thought we'd dust off the VLS again because um, Dragon's are pretty weak to stab, I'm quite sure. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to get some decent... You can't... It can only be used in target worlds. I'm in a target world. Within the wilderness. Is that an actual thing? I just thought I had to be a target... I didn't realise I had to be in the wilderness. Okay, take two, let's try that again. Let it be known, I'm a literal moron. Um, yeah, the KBD cave, you can't use your bloody blighted food because I'm so used to just using wilderness items. It's, it, it's throwing me off, man. Right, okay, so um, <laughs> without anti-fire pots, this thing actually hits really hard, but we did finally 
um, actually managed to get a kill after some catastrophic mistakes, quite frankly. So uh, yeah, there it is. There is our first King Black Dragon kill. This with our anti potions is is pretty challenging to be honest. He hits pretty hard. Um, let's just click off what we don't what we don't want to be picking up. Um, so yeah, the respawn time is really really quickly, which I'm sure is great when you're good at the KDB. When you're trying to you know just learn it. Right, he's already back on me. Here we go. Just look at how hard he hits. I mean, like 15s. Is this is this some sort of joke? I, I spend half my time eating whilst I'm here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm literally not going to get another kill. I've been trying to run under him to, to, to eat. <laughs> Saying it like I'm some sort of pro, like not everyone does that. But uh, yeah, this this is going to be tough. Absolutely no idea what Claw Clipper is or how he just completed it. But yeah, probably just saying I'm a bit of a beast. Okay, so we're yeah we're not gonna we're not gonna get another kill, but we got nearly a three kill trip, which I do understand is is absolutely pathetic. But you know we're learning. Another day at the Enclave, another lure attempt. That's kill count 10, um, King Black Dragon Novice, Tas do you mean novice pal? I've got 10 bloody kills mate. But on the serious, uh, yeah, this is this is pretty challenging. Each kill takes such a long time because it's like a one, two kill trip. Um, and then I've got to get all the way back here. And until I can do the Wilderness Hard Diaries, I haven't got the redirect to the obelisk. So I'm just teleporting around for ages. So yeah, if anyone has any theory crafting ideas of a, a slightly easier way to do this, where I could extend my trips, if not, I might just wait and see if I can do the hard durries. But uh, yeah, this was a bit, alert, a bit of a learning curve. He, this was tough. Decided just to finish the Black Dragon's task and revisit the King Black Dragon when we have some more ideas. Um, and we got attacked up here. Um, and actually, he had a little clan of friends that also got on us. But somehow, we managed to get a gap from like three to four PKs and managed to get away. It's always pretty nice when that happens because, uh, yeah, I thought almost definitely we were dead. Oh, we're on a Chaos Druid task and we just got the Elder Hood. Um, it wasn't a collection log pop up because I've actually got both the top and the hood, but I lost one of them. I can't remember which one it was, so. Hopefully it was hood and we've just regained it. Moment of truth, task finished up. Um, oh, it's not a druid, it's a chaos druid, isn't it? Was it the helm we needed or the hood? Yes, it was. So we've now reclaimed our hood, which is very nice. So just the bottom piece to go. Next up, we've got a Lava Dragon's task, and that's going to be a completely full looting bag. We also do have two of the keys, so yeah, it's going to be some nice pro XP, two Larry's keys. Let's bank and finish up this task. Aha, uh -huh. well, if it is my favourite blue fella, I will have that Hunter XP, and that's going to be a level 15 now. Uh, yep, 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 yep. I'm pretty sure that you don't make it out of this one. It is still quite nice to see that uh, people still PK here, but I've just been smited as well. Um, fortunately, I've been smited for anything because I only bought three items. Very, very clever me, but uh, yeah, good fight. <laughs> Doesn't this just embody the man that's just been PK'd, his raggedy ass little cloven and a stick for a weapon? Um, but yeah, with the final kill of this lava dragon, that is going to be the lava dragon task over. I absolutely love the melee gear on this account. You run into this man down a dark alley, you're in trouble. Right, let's see if we can get some nice VLS specs off. An 11, yeah, that's that's not exactly what we're looking for. A 0, why the hell did I pay all that money for this thing? A 16, okay, so absolutely you suspect... Oh, a 51 max hit. I have no idea I could hit that high. That is... Yeah, happy with that. Green Dragons, you've been finished up, mate. That's 347 tasks within the wilderness. Right then, we actually have ourselves a task that we've never had, and it is Smoke Devils. Let's see if we can get some big beefing VLS hits on these boys. An 8, not the best. A 16, how can they hit a... Oh no, you've got to have like a special face mask or nose peg or something, haven't you? Oh my god, what a wazzock. Yeah, that, that, that D-Med just is not cutting the mustard. Right, let's come back when we've actually got the proper gear. Okay, so now we're actually wearing the right stuff. That was actually a pretty successful trip. This isn't a bad task at all. Obviously, we can't burst or anything, but we did manage to get ourselves three at Laren's Keys, and we got lots of goodies in the bags as well. Um, we've got Red Dehyde Van Braces, which actually is an upgrade for us, and we weren't able to get Van Braces before, so that's really nice to see. As you can see on the floor, we got some Black Dehyde Vans, and that was the big boy upgrade we were waiting for. They were one in one to eight, I think, so we did hope to get them. So we go from a minus eight to a minus four. So it's actually four range bonus better than the Combat Brace, which was our best in slot uh, gloves. Task finished up, and that's 348 tasks. I've decided I'm just gonna go to 350 Wilderness tasks before uh, testing out the Revenant shortcut. And uh, yeah, two to go. 81 Scorpions, that means let's have some fun up at Scorpio. Hello, Mr. Genie, I will be grabbing you. Uh, actually won't be able to use this one yet. I'm going to quickly finish up this Scorpio task and uh, yeah, just get a little shard, why not, for the video. 
uh, 2.5k. Uh, Not the greatest, but let's run this little uh, lamp out here, and it's going to get us a uh, it's going to get us a hunter level, which is going to be pretty cool. Let's get away from the scorpions, um, and it's 27 we need for the bear handing, and we're now at level 16. So uh, yeah, we are notching towards it. First trip up at Scorpia uh, finished, and in the looting bag we have some Admiral Pies. Um, I'm going to keep my cards close to my chest at the moment about what I'm going to be using those for, but uh, yeah, they're going to come in very handy. 500. And with the kill of this big scorpion, that is going to be the task over. One more until the uh, 350th task. Um, we're not really going to be able to look in the looting bag. She's got loads of little scorpions here. So let me uh, run outside and see what goodies we got. We didn't manage to get our hands on any shards this task, but we did get a dragon scimitar, which is one of the rare ones, and uh, some more of those pies. And while that's going to be our 350th task, I can't believe we didn't get a single superior on any of those tasks, but we didn't. Although that does look incredibly clean. 200 net crew kills at 42 KXP, 350 total tasks for 375 points. Be beautiful. Right then. It is time. That 89 agility that we got last episode, it's time to put it to the test and uh, yeah, see how many Revenant PKs we can frustrate. <laughs> yes, I know this man doesn't have the agility shortcut and uh, in fairness, this is exactly the sort of guy we die to. You know, he's a pretty decent PK. He's got a shed load of gear, completely outgears us. So just being able to hop over there and just watching him have to walk away into the distance. Oh, really makes those hours of grinding worth it. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Bye. Ah, damn, this geezer has the agility shortcut. That is a clutch and tangle, but I almost definitely should have died several times there. God, that was a lucky escape. Oh my diddly, it's not going well at the moment. The man just killed me with D claws in Enchanted, and he's got the shortcut at level 94. Oh man, that is so annoying. Look how low the boss is. We so nearly got him. Okay, he doesn't have the agility shortcut, so uh, not much food, but hopefully we can just tangle, uh, take the entangle for four seconds and be able to get out of here. Oh, the boss is absolutely smashing us as well. This is not ideal. We have no food left. Oh, that's going to be a KO, isn't it? That's so frustrating. Didn't get smited. Oh my god, I didn't have protect. <laughs> Fuck, good game, crossbow. Oh, can't really explain this one, boys, but to play wilderness only and lose your any wilderness weapons, it's so demotivating. And it's unfortunately probably going to be the end of the road for us. I'm so thankful for everyone that supported me. It's just before the boss rework comes out, this is just the worst timing, and it's yeah, just so, so demotivating. Yeah, right, boys. Never will we go down that easy. We have a rework coming. 
Only the weak don't fight back from setbacks like this. No matter how big, boys, we will come back stronger. We'll slay more wilderness creatures than we ever have before, and we'll come back thirsty for the rebuild. Tell me I didn't have you in the first half, boys. Unfortunately, as you can see, we no longer have a crossbow. We're going to be using the magic short eye. Uh, we does mean we can now use the amulet of avarice, and obviously got a cheeky little buff not too long ago. And we're going to be using it with rune arrows. We're at about 7.8k orcs at the time of recording this, as we just lost the crossbow. Um, and we're going to get to 10k, so we're going to test this little bad boy out, see if we can grab ourselves anything nice, and uh, yeah, just see what life without a cross is like. Kicking things off with a one mil totem, very very nice. That's going to be another mil ski. Something quite nice about using the Avarice as a plus one over Crawls is you can build up a bit of wealth in your bag, which I quite like. I like the risk. Um, yeah, so you're going to get some nice looting bags probably because you don't have to bank because the items are noted. Just like that. Pop, pop. Another 1.2 in the bag. Motherfucking money. Something I wanted to do over the getting the final 10k kills, and I say the final 10k kills because I've had a total of 30k orc kills, and you're going to see a comparison between the three of those toward the end of the video. But the last 10k, what I wanted to do is I wanted to track each hour how many kills I was getting with the magic short, as I believe, if I remember correctly, it was about 110 per hour with the crawls. In our first hour, we attacked four times, we died zero times, and we got 73 orc kills. Hour two, we attacked twice, we have no deaths, and we got 94 kills. Hour 3, we were attacked 3 times, no deaths and 103 kills. Hour 4, we got attacked once, no deaths again and 75 kills. Hour 5, we got attacked twice, 0 deaths and 81 kills. Hour 6, no attacks, no deaths and 100 kills. Hour 7, again, that was a 2 hour stint, no attacks, no deaths and 101 kills. And the final hour, we did finally get a death. We got attacked twice, 1 death and 83 kills. As you can see, these kills vary per hour quite a bit. This can be depending on how busy the caves are, how many PKs there are and stuff. But I was quite surprised, pleasantly surprised actually, to see with the Magic Short and the Avarice that I was averaging 89 orc kills per hour, which is pretty nice. We actually have over 50,000 Revenant kills under our belt now, and 30,000 of those have been orcs. We have tracked 10k before they got the buff, so these are 10k pre-buff orcs. We also have a picture of our 10k post-buff orcs. Both of those are on Skald. And now to add to the collection, we have the post-buff Skald 10k orcs. It's a really nice comparison. I'm really glad that I saved all of these screenshots. There's been a hell of a lot of time, research, effort, ups, downs, trials and tribulations put into this one. So if you are enjoying it, boys, please do consider subscribing because we are going to have some very, very beastly content coming up very few in the next. Hello, guys, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 8 of the Wilderness Only Iron Man series. So, fresh from the heartbreak of our dearly departed crossbow, it's time to dust ourselves off and get back on the saddle. As you can see, we have just over 50k revenants killed, which is a pretty nice milestone to hit. I want to do some revenant testing now as we have the magic short and the avarice rather than the crossbow. I'll be looking at the three lots of revenants nearest the agility shortcut as you can bet that I didn't do all that agility not to make use of it. We have the finding of the orcs from the last episode so I'm going to do 10 hours of both the revenant parathenes and the revenant hellhounds. First drop of what you might say is one of the rarer type drops, it's about the same sort of rate as the lower level emblems. So the method that I've been using with the Parathenes is basically you just kill the two that are here, you then hop worlds and then just rinse and repeat because I think their respawn time is about 30 seconds and obviously I can kill them slightly quicker than that so it's going to be the quickest way of doing it. Um, just looking at the looting bag, 1.9, nearly 2 mil so that is, uh, yeah that's pretty nice from uh, such a low level NPC isn't it? So we've just finished up hours 3 and 4. Hours 3 I did actually get attacked 3 times, I didn't die at all, but I only managed 103 kills. Hours 4 was a really good hour, I only got attacked the once, and I managed 131 kills in that hour. Let's see what's in the bag, so we've got 1.6 mil in the bag, plus a couple of little goodies in the inventory. Ooh, that's going to be our first totem from the Parfines, and it's the 1 milli one. We're up to hour 6 of the testing now, and actually in those 2 hours that I just did, I didn't actually get attacked at all. So we managed to get 133 kills in hour 5, and 128 kills in hour 6, which is really, really nice. And obviously because of the 1 mil totem, we've got a really nice bag for one, that's going to be 2.8 mil. There is 5 more useless stones coming in. As we had a quite a couple of hours, we did get pretty confident, so we decided not to bank. Um, this is what it's looking like after hour 7 up here. I thought this was quite funny. A PK gets on us, and we're actually risking a 4 mil emblem um, that we just got in this one, plus all the goodies from before. Um, and he doesn't have the agility shortcut, he's going pretty hard on us. Um, and either he genuinely does recognise me, or he just realises that my tangle's out and he doesn't have the shortcut. So, I mean, he was attacking me for a few minutes before, you think he might, uh, think he might notice me by then. 
And with the killer list pie, I think that's going to take us to the end of hour eight. Hour seven, we got attacked twice, we didn't die. And hours eight, we got attacked once and didn't die either. We got 129 kills in hour seven, 131 in hour eight. So some pretty good kills. Um, and this is what we're currently packing. Um, obviously, we've got ourselves a 4mm emblem, which actually is the same drop rate as the 8mm uh, and the 16mm, which is it's just kind of funny. But uh, yeah, nice to get the 4mm one all the same. Um, but with the looting bag and that little inventory check, yeah, we're, uh, we're risking a decent bit at the moment. So we're actually just coming to the end of the 10 hours now. Um, still haven't banked. Obviously, that's not a sensible thing to be doing. So let's have a little price check of the inventory. Actually, uh, we have accumulated loads of ether in the bracelet, so we'll add that one into it because um, obviously this is the ether that you'd also get. That's just from automatically picking it up by the bracelet, so let's uncharge that. Nearly 10k ether, which is really nice. So, um, yeah, just in the inventory alone, we've got sort of, let's have a little look, see how much all of this adds up to. Um, that's going to be 6 mil and almost 10k ether. The ether is obviously going to be really useful when, not if, we get a uh, revenant weapon back. And nearly 6 mil in the bag. So, uh, yeah, a whole load of money. We, we we made actually quite a lot in this 10 hours. And we also got ourselves a whole load of ether for when we do get a revenant weapon back. So that's going to be really, really useful. So this is going to be the first hour up at the Hellhounds. Um, yeah, I'm already not enjoying this as much as the Pyre Fiends. They are a lot slower kills. I've actually looked it up, and their defense is actually better than the Orcs, which is pretty crazy. The kills are kind of slow, but 848k for the first hour. Honestly, that's not terrible, but um, already I'm kind of preferring the Pyre Fiends. Just coming up to the second hour at the Howl House. Kind of getting used to it. Um, the drops this time were slightly better. Six bracelets of Ethereum. Okay, there's a PK there. Let's just go. Um, but yeah, 80 kills that hour. This is going to be hour three up at the Hellhounds. Um, we actually did get attacked three times this hour. All very, very simple escapes. It tends to be lower level PKs. I've noticed this side of the uh, this side of the jump rather than the Orcs. But 1.5 in the back. That's pretty decent. Eight bracelets of Ethereum. We're going to have some nice effort when we finally do get that weapon. 500k emblem drop um, these ones are a bit weird when you're scold because they're the most rare emblem when you're scold but the least rare when you're not scold so uh yeah, it could have been 16 mil. Hour 5, and this was by far our most smooth hour. We didn't get attacked whatsoever on hour 5. Um, managed to get 87 kills. We also got a cheeky little lamp. So that's going to be 170 hunter experience for level 18. Getting closer and closer to that level 27. And in the bag, we made a massive 2.4 mil, which is uh, pretty huge in an hour from these revenants. Agility level? Thought so. <laughs> oh, I feel like a wanker, but sometimes you've just got to be a little bit cocky, ain't you? General rule of the wilderness, or of life really, is, is try not to be a dick, unless you're really bored, and then, you know, dick away. Um, oh, <laughs> uh, Jesus. I mean, that really would have been calmer if he just absolutely smashed my head off, but uh, yeah, I've already seen he hasn't got the agility level, so uh, see you later, tomato. Another fine gentleman out for some blood. There's the entangle, that should be a uh, nice easy escape, so let's just, uh, let's be cocky and... Uh, <laughs> oh god, he's absolutely fuming. God, I feel like a bell end this hour. Let's just get a nice little crossbow on this final kill of the hour. There is two beautiful runite ore. Um, that's hour six done, and 990k and 73 kills in that hour. I just, I can't explain, I knew he was going to do that. Um, he was there for a couple of minutes, and you just get a feel of when someone's about to sack you. Um, and I, I just knew it, I knew it was at something, um, which, which honestly just makes the whole thing a little bit worse. I didn't protect myself better. We decided to cut the Hellhound short after that death, as I'd already kind of decided that wasn't going to be my route. The findings are the Orcs from last episode we were able to get 8-9 kills an hour, but that was using Rune Arrows and the Eagle Eye Prayer. The Hellhounds was only 79 kill an hour average, our lowest hour being 71 kills and our highest hour being 87. We did use Addy Arrows rather than Rune, but we did also have to use the Eagle Eye Prayer for that one, otherwise they'd reheal too quickly. The Pyre Fiends on the other hand, they were 125 kills per hour. I didn't need to use the Eagle Eye, and I was also able to use just Adamant Arrows. So all things considered, I'm going to be camping the Pyre Fiends. 
I'm not a massive fan of hop killing, which I have to do for them, but I use the least amount of surprise, and the PK in traffic is pretty low at my combat level. To land a wilderness weapon from the Pyrefiends, the rate is 1 in 34,540. There are three possible weapons, two of which we actually need, so to land any one of the three, it's roughly 11,514 to 1, which will be the KC that we're going to go for, and indeed, hope we do get one. With 125 kills per hour, which is what we were getting, the grind in total should take us about 92 hours. I am also aware there is currently a poll in game that could change the drop rates of the weapons and things, but whether this will pass, and uh, even if it does, when Jagex will get it in game, we don't actually know, so I'm not too worried about waiting for that. Also, not to mention we'll be collecting lots of ether just from the bracelets of Ethereum alone. I can expect about 422 from this grind, which will actually be when broken down over 100,000 ether. Okay, so to keep things spicy for myself and you guys, I've decided to actually take 10 ranging pots and uh, try not to bank until I've drunk them all. So that's going to be roughly 10 hours up at the pyre things, if I make it, if I don't die. And uh, yeah, it'd be really cool to see 10 straight hours of loot in the looting bag. Um, is this a good idea? Absolutely not. Should you do it? Probably not. Should I be doing it? Almost definitely not. Am I going to? Absolutely. And uh, guys, if you are enjoying it, please do give it a like. It really does help. Oh, we've got a PK up here that isn't actually a pure. Let's see if he's got the old agility shortcut. He doesn't, so that's going to be a nice, easy escape. We're pretty low on food because we just got in a tussle. We've only got the four anglers and the two kawam wham 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 bams or whatever they're called. But um, yeah, these do drop food, which is why we can kind of stay up here indefinitely. We just really need to hope that we get some food drops rather sharpish and we don't get caught with the very low amount of food. Somebody up here on us. Uh, let's see if he's got the agility shortcut. Okay, so it does seem he does have the agility shortcut. I don't think he's got any mage, so as long as he's just going to range, we should be able to get through. If we can catch him. Oh, okay. Um, I just wanted to kill the orcs. Just wanted to throw a few bolts at my hand and then kill the orcs. Fair enough, then. Pretty easy one. Ooh. Ooh, two million emblem. Those uh, loot, loot beams, they do get me. But, uh, yeah, stick that one in the old uh, looting bag. And let's see what we got. 5.8 mil so far. So that is a big, beefy bag. Yeah. Oh, dear. This ain't looking good. Let's get out of here. Um, he's going to have the agility shortcut, isn't he? Look at him. Oh, this is not looking too pretty. He hasn't actually attacked me yet. What? All right. <laughs> Sorry, what? You're just, just going to run on past me? <laughs> Okie dokie then. So we're just coming to the end of our fifth range pot, which is technically the halfway point of us staying up here. This is kind of like a PP style, just stay how long you can stay in one area type thing. We'll just kill this other revenant and then we'll, uh, yeah, we'll see what we've got in the looting bag. I haven't actually been attacked all that much, um, or I, I kind of have. I've probably been attacked at least once an hour, but they've always been by like pure PKs, which let's face it, are not particularly hard to get away from or, or, or ones much lower combat than me. So what have we got in the bag? Nearly 9 mil. My god, this is a big risk. 30 bracelets of Ethereum as well. Let's hope we don't get killed now because, uh, yeah, bag's getting pretty big. Kind of annoying that Jagget's made it so you basically cannot kill these bosses on an iron. Um, it's always a real PK and hotspot as well. And it hits pretty hard, so let's get the hell out of here because, uh, yeah, I want to be trying to preserve my food. We've lost a little bit of food there um, because obviously we're not allowed to bank and we're just kind of staying up here. So, uh, yeah, let's hot worlds and replenish. Magic seed drop coming in. Always a little bit frustrating to see those, as I know it could have been an emblem, but, uh, yeah, we'll take them all the same. What a bloody donut. 
I'm sure you're all furiously typing, you bloody idiot. You should have just gone to the bank. It's only two seconds away. Look, I know. It was a good bit of fun. We gave it a good stab. I think in total we lost about 12 mil worth of loot and probably about 30k ether, which is the one that hurts. We are only really here for the ether and weapons. But, you know, we're going to be playing it a little bit more sensibly now. Two or three range pots a time. And, uh, yeah, just trying to grab ourselves a weapon. Look, we had some good fun. And, uh, yeah, we tried our luck. But time to rein it in just a little bit. Six magic seeds. Very nice. I'll just plant those in the farming wilderness patch. If there was one. One milliem. Very nice. Oh yeah, lovely, nice to pop there next to my magic seed patch. Oh yeah, nice, nice, couple more, yeah, lovely. Well, 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 what do we have here? A fellow nator. No way, I've been betrayed, boys. Not by him, not by a fellow nator. That stings. Look, he's geared up, he's geared up in his little mage gear. He's seen me right for the pluck and he's come for his goodies. There was only ever one nator coming out on top of this. We slapped him with the entanglement log. We get a few cheeky words in. We let him know about his betrayal. We let him know a fellow nator should not be attacking a fellow with nator. And then we slap him with the noob in the log. Nice. It's a pretty juicy one, isn't it? 3.3 mil, 17 bracelets of hatherium. A very, very nice. This is the geezer that killed us for our bank before. So, uh, yeah, hopefully be able to get away from this one. He does have the shortcut. Um, there's the court entangle. So, nice easy escape this time. Don't know why I couldn't have done that when I uh, was risking the 12 mil. But uh, nice to get away. I bet he was gr <laughs> licking his greedy little lips, wasn't he? Open for a second round of 12 million golden pennies. Ancient statuette and 2 million coins added to the bonk. Who the fuck is that guy? Who the fuck is that? No damn well who I am. Who the fuck is that? Oh my god. After another trip, my sack is once again absolutely full to the brim of goodies. I've decided to give old Mr. Scorpio a little bit of air out the bank and hope that he can bring us some good luck. Also, a little um, ether update because we've actually got loads in the bracelet that I really need to uh, remove and stick in the bank. And uh, yeah, we're actually, uh, we're actually going to have a hell of a lot of effort when we get in a weapon. These little one millers come in quite often at the parfums, but it's going to be another milli to the bank. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh man, these are so hard to get these revenant weapons. Oh, please don't tell me that's my revenant weapon for these pyrefiends. No, that's Faramon Scepter number three. Oh no, <laughs> no man. Well, um, there goes some more RNG in places we just don't bloody want it. Um, more U seeds and uh, an agent totem. Uh, yeah, two rare drops on the ground. Neither really super useful. Some more not so magical seeds. <laughs> oh, Jagex suck my seed. When shit isn't going your way, shit is just not going your way. Um, we've lost around a bit of Avarice. Um, it's our only one. It's a real pain in the ass because now we're going to have to find a different way of sculling. Uh, we're not going to get noted items. It's just going to make the whole grind a whole lot more difficult. It's something we really didn't need after the loss of last episode. Um, yeah, it was something beyond our control. We lagged out. We've lagged out several times at revs, but uh, we've never lost our plus one. We've never been attacked. Uh, but yeah, logged back in. Same thought as always. Probably dead. Normally still alive, but this time we were in fact dead. Um, yeah, good fight in with that Avarice. I ain't even gonna lie to you, chaps and chapesses. The crossbow loss in the last one, the Theremin's drop in this one, and the loss of the Avarice, it hit us pretty hard. I was pretty demotivated at this point, and sometimes you just need to log the fuck out and form some sort of plan. So, we took ourselves off for a run, I'm lucky enough to live in a beautiful area, and we sat down with a lovely cup of tea. After which we were ready to once again dust ourselves off and get the fuck back out there. You haven't been doing your agility lap, sir, so that's going to be a nice easy escape for me, even though you are packing some serious heat there. So, boys, uh, right, what we've decided is we're going to be alking all the alkables up there, just using the loot bag for the things that we're not able to out, like emblems or runes or things that don't out for much. 
So we've actually got 1.3 mil um, in cash from Malkin up there. I do like collecting the items, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. We're also just going to skull when we're up there, and it means that we don't have to bank constantly, which is actually only going to take our kills an hour from about 125 an hour to I'll still probably be getting about 110. And as you can see, that's going to be a really nice looting bag. So, uh, yeah, we've kind of found a way around it without the Avarice. Um, it's a little bit more rotating, a little bit more frustrating, but we're going to make it work. Well, would you look at that? That's a milestone I've been looking to hit for a while. One billion, one billion bank value, only being able to obtain things within the wilderness. We built a whole account within the wilderness. I'm going to very quickly just flip through that, like that's most of our wealth. Um, yeah, nobody can see it that quickly, but if you're really that interested, just pause the video or something, because yeah, can't be bothered to sort of sit and talk for every item. But uh, yeah, one billion bank value. Oh, you absolute fucking donkey. I was meant to dismantle the bracelet and I've dismantled my entire shitting bag. Oh, God's sake. That's annoying. Right, better pick all this up. There's quite a lot of value in that. Um, gonna have to drop all the food, pick all the stuff up. Um, yeah, if I get caught now, I'm pretty damn screwed. These loot beams, oh, when I'm up at revs, these little loot beams, they do give me a throth of excitement for, uh, yeah, something a little more special than that. But, two million, we will not snuff at that. Ancient Crystal, that's like number 12 or something, 15, I don't know, we've got loads of them, but um, when we get 8 construction we can build the obelisk, I might just have a house of like 20 obelisks, why not? Out of range and pots, so another full trip done up here, um, this Alkin method, yeah, of course we prefer the Avarice, uh, we've got a skull and other players, it's a little bit irritating, but 3.1 mil, we're holding our own, we're managing to stay here, we're getting the risk factor of getting some big looting bags, because I quite enjoy that, and uh, it's working, you know, we're getting through these revenants. Oh my fucking god! The Vagoras! It exists, boys! It actually exists! Oh my god, we've killed well over 50,000 revenants for this thing! Oh, boys, I cannot explain how happy that makes me. We have been... Let's get the shitting hell out of here. Let's get that protection item on. I cannot lose this. I am not bringing it. I'm not sculling up with it. We're not... It's not going the same way as the crossbow. Boys, I am so happy. I just need to get the shitting hell out of here and protect this little thing. It actually exists. It actually exists. Oh, it's not often I get a lob on over a RuneScape item, but uh, we have been hunting that one for some long time. Right, boys, I was fully prepared to go the full 11,000 deep, but we have killed over 7,000 revenants in this episode. We're already about 60 hours into it, so I think this is going to be a nice place to leave it because, you know, we got literally the best drop we could possibly get. I'm so happy with the Vagoras. Uh, trust me, boys, you are going to want to subscribe because with the current wilderness bosses the way they are, we're going to be absolutely testing them with the Vagoras, and soon we're going to have a whole wilderness revamp, so the Vagoras is going to come in so handy for that. So there's going to be some real, real sort of exciting content coming up, and I, for one, can't wait to get back to some bossing, especially with this new bad boy. Hello, guys, and welcome to episode 9 of season 2 of the Wilderness Only Iron Man series. As you can see, what we have... Oh, a genie. I do not mind if I diddly do grab that first. Uh, that's obviously going to go on the Hunter. I don't think that's Hunter level, but as always, we are nearing that 26, which we're going to try and uh, do a little something with. So, as I was saying, we got the Vigorous Chain Mace in the last episode, and I really, really want to either get myself a Hellhound or a Skeleton, or possibly a Bear's Task, to be able to do some Vetion or some Callisto. So we're just going to run through this, skip a few tasks, got plenty of points, and see if we can pick up one of those. Okay, that took way too many points and we didn't even get the task. Uh, we've got to draw a line somewhere. Abyssal Demon is a really good task to come to at some point, so we're going to keep that one. Head up to Vetion anyway, not worry about Slayer Exploiter around your keys. Okay, I'm absolutely buzzing. Uh, first time using the Chain Mace on this account. You boys are going to witness it firsthand. Uh, I thought we'd bring it up to Vetion because it's super effective. Already a 36 was that, something like that. Oh, it's going to be so much more consistent. I remember when we first started killing Vetion, we were taking, oh, just like literally about half an hour a kill. In fact, he was going back to his original form, so we had to ult, and it was just, it was such a difficult, difficult task. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to see what we can do on this. Oh, just actually hitting feels so good. A 41, now that is absolutely booming. And a back to back 41s, okay, this is going to be so good.
Okay, so that first kill we actually did mess up a little bit on the Hellhound. Uh, we had to re-lure Betty on, but sometimes that does happen when he changes forms anyway. We're about to get our first kill, and I'm really excited to see what it is. Just, uh, yeah, just probably the pet first kill. Vigora's chainmates followed up by the pet. We'll take it. What's it going to be? A hundred dragon bones. Actually, that's a really, really good bloody drop. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with that. And what's that? A five minute kill. We've gone from a like half an hour kill to a five minute kill. Beautiful. Okay, so even our kill after the first one was slightly better, and this is going to be our third kill. Uh, we've got a lamp in the inventory, what's going to be? Uh, just some coins, you get this from all the wilderness bosses, not the best, but uh, let's put this on Hunter, if I can actually find, there it is, on Hunter, and that is actually going to be a level this time, that's going to be a level 19, and um, oh wow, look at that kill time, 3.36. That is bonkers. Honestly, this is like surpassing my expectations. Okay, some few CMs. Um, that's a worthwhile drop. One, it's worth a lot of money, but the value in it to us is it's going to be useful for both um, Venonatus, possibly even more when they get the rework, and uh, Scorpia. So yeah, decent drop. Hadn't actually realised that Bombay Bad Boy was coming in, but that's a level 92 strength. I'm an absolute fucking machine with this chain mace. Seven kill trip, I put Betty on. Yep, absolutely not today, Mr. Pcare. See, the thing about me is I literally have the quickest fingers in Gilinor. I will pretty much never die. I know Vetion's a hotspot for teams, but when you're as quick and as good and as skilled player as me, it's pretty much impossible to die. So, uh, yeah, unlucky Pcares, but, uh, yeah, you're going to have to pick a different victim, I'm afraid. Ooh, cheeky little draconic double wander kill of this big orange boy oh a one you're embarrassing me as i was saying <clears throat> kill of this big orange boy is going to be kill count number 200 and yeah we got up to 200 kills pretty quickly this mace is an absolute g -g 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 game changer oh yeah and that's going to be a court and tangle if we can just dd under him there we go and uh yeah it's going to be an escape still never ever died in this game i'm unbelievable well, I feel honoured that you've all turned up. That's going to be a good fight, boys. And thank you very much for coming to my vet on getting drilled into the fucking ground party. Hope to see you all soon. Oh, we've seen a few of those in our time, but uh, it's not a drop we get tired of seeing. A draconic pickaxe. You might even say we've picked a fair few of those up in our time. Wait. Are you the YouTuber? Ra. Wait, are you? Question mark. You know it. Big fan. T.Y. That's a fucking massive sword you whacked me with. O and GF. M888888. GF. That's going to be kill count number 250. I think that seems like a nice place to uh, leave it for now. As, uh, yeah, I think that's all the betting we can handle right now. But we've certainly given the mace a nice introduction. Taking our Vagoras up to the Abyssal Demons to do that task that we got earlier. Nothing major off the superior that we just got, however, they do have a guaranteed drop of Loranial Key within the Slayer Cave, so that's nice. Got another Greater Abyssal Demon, and uh, with the kill of this one, uh, we don't get anything too good off that, but the XP, the Slayer XP off those are uh, pretty beefy. That's the Abyssal Demon's task, and peeve with woo -oo -oo -oo. Uh, for those of you who don't speak fluent ghosts, that just means like and subscribe. Yeah, you, look at the button. Fucking click it, mate. 96 skeletons, oh, that could be another Vetion task. Oh, I'll go on then. With Vetion, Skeleton's Task, you get five chances at your Loranial Key, four off the Hellhounds, and one off the boss itself. Oh, well done. You're joking. Not another one? Oh, for God's sake. That's the third Laren's Key on this trip. I did tell you these Skeletal Hellhounds were good. And a little known fact for you uh, Laren Key enthusiasts. The Skeletal Hellhounds, the greaters at least, are actually the best Laren Key dropper other than superiors and bosses. Hmm. What's that for a little fact fact? By Jove, I'm a strong boy. Elite clue from Vetion, it's a wilderness step. Um, no, I am not completely mental and I will not be trying to juggle uh, elite clues. But, you've got to give it a go, right? You never know. Back seven back. Right, add a wilderness Sherlock. It's time. For the longest time, I didn't do Earth Warriors, but in the name of wilderness completionist, I'm going to do anything that can drop me a champion scroll, but that's the Earth Warriors task. Diddly done. Just like every good YouTuber should, I miss a level, but that is 88 Slayer. Black Demons, you done, mate. Raiders, great. Jellies, add you for pudding, mate. Zombies, completed you too, mate.
Jamflex, you really want me to get a, a drop from Vetion. That's going to be a, another Vetion task via the Hellhound. That's going to be Kill Count 300 at the Big Beefy Boy for a supplies dropper. Actually, a useful time for once. It's so nice actually being able to get some Vetion kills. Hey, that's not a bad one at all, is it? 100 grimy ranars, worth a bit of money, but to us, that's 100 prayer potions. A task is finished up with the skeletal hellhound, so this is going to be the final kill. What are we going to get? Uh, 10 ogre coffin keys, completely pointless, but that's a nice looking inventory. Obviously got the 100 ranars, should have probably banked them, didn't. Also risk, risking the lamp, but why not? And that's for a nice level, it's going to be 20 hunter, so we're just 6 away from our goal now. This is a short story about Wilderness' Wilderness Slayer Adventures. Got some earth warriors, smashed them into the ground, saw off these dirt. Devils killed a superior for far cool. Got 99 attack divided by two. Finished up the jellies. Got a second wilderness clue step. Finished up some more jellies. Chrissy Lou was like, Now, nah, mate, get your ass back there for a third time. This joker jumped on me, but I was like, No, son, I'll be seeing you later. Queen Cressilia, I've once again done your jellies task. Showed you all why I do in fact have the quickest fingers in Gillenor. Finished off a greater necreal task that only took us about seven weeks. Done the not so greater demons task. And, well, yeah, another Vetion task. Well, I've been juggling clues like some sort of jester throughout all these tasks. So I thought, why not take them up to the rose chest and finally try to turn them into a casket. Got our first clue scroll fairly quickly. Is it going to be a wilderness step? Um, it's not. I'm hoping to hopefully get some fairly quickly though. So we had to drop quite a lot of non wilderness steps whilst we were doing the slayer grind. Nope. 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 Well, that was fucking dreadful. We ran out of supplies whilst up here. Um, we got two mil in the looting bag. Um, this is taking ages. This is, <laughs> I, I, I'm astonished that I haven't got a wilderness step yet, but uh, we, we plod on. Nope. 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 To hopefully get some fairly quickly those, we had to drop quite a lot of non-wilderness steps whilst we were doing the slave grind. Well, shit me, boys. Honestly, I went over 25 clues without a wilderness step. We now have three. I want to get to at least five. Let's hope these next two come a shitload quicker. Honestly, only had to drop a few that time. So, uh, yeah, not too bad. That's going to be another wilderness step. Oh, baby. And there she blows. That is going to be number five. Um... It would be a tragic not to get the casket now. So we're only 36k from the level. That's just over an hour. So we're going to see if we can get a sixth clue scroll. If I do get the level before I get a sixth clue scroll, we will just try with the five. And uh, yeah, let's see what we get. Um, I can't click. I think I'm lagging out. I seriously, seriously, I swear to God, this has been such a long grind. If I lag out before these clue scrolls, just log me out or something. Oh, fuck me. I didn't drop the clue quickly enough. I had a couple of seconds. That fucking knobhead with a sack on his back got in the way. Ah! That's fucking painful. KC, oh my god, oh yes, I saw the uh, I saw the pop up <laughs> and I didn't see anything on the ground, I didn't know what it was. Veto, oh, we have waited so long for our second pet. Pressure's off because it gets auto insured these days, but uh, oh, there he is, isn't he a beauty? Oh, I like the orange and the purple. I do think the purple goes slightly more with the Vagoras Chain Mace and sort of the Wilderness vibe. But he looks good in the orange as well. He's actually getting an update when the Wilderness changes happen um, graphically. So I wonder whether the pet will graphically update. Be interesting to look back on this clip and see the difference in things. Oh, it's just great. We've got the Vagoras Chain Mace. We've got our second pet. We've got the Wilderness updates coming. 
bright, bright future. You're going to want to subscribe for that one, boys, because we've got some great content coming. As you can see, 75 Laren Key in the inventory. We're going to open the chest. Not in this episode. Probably wait for 100 or something, so I'm going to blue you, bore you boys, because I think it's a nice place to leave it. Hello, guys, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 10, into the double digits of Season 2 now. We've conveniently got ourselves a Callisto task, and I cannot wait to try the chain mace up here. I've yet to try at Callisto, so I'm excited for this one. Something else I'm really keen to achieve in this episode is the Amulet of Glory, which will actually be, forever, our best in slot amulet. Feel free to join my CC for unbelievable PVM tips. The changes to the Wilderness bosses are really needed and I'm really excited for them, but I'm also really pleased that I've got to try them before the changes and the safe spot methods and all these sort of things, and now I'm going to get to try them after the changes. We've been doing Wilderness content on this account for so long now that we've seen it in so many different stages, like we played the account when the Ferox Enclave wasn't in, so it's really nice to grow alongside the Wilderness, and I see a really bright future for it. And that was kill count 800 at 4 minutes 44, that looks very clean indeed. Okie smokey then, good fight gentlemen. Thanks for coming back, man, but that's going to be a no from me today. Oh, I actually thought he got the barrage and that would have been super awkward, but you'd never seen this because I deleted it because I probably look silly. Another day, another pickaxe. The collection continues to grow. Right then, lads. Remember last episode? We got a whole bunch of Laren's keys. We didn't open any of them. Just straight up blue ball jewel. Well, we're going to open them now. And the reason for that is we're super close to having the gems for AT crafting and opening the keys will ensure that we can get to that amulet of glory. A clever person would split his 75 keys into a few trips, but... I'm not a smart man. went surprisingly smoothly and we landed ourselves a nice piece of Dagenhai which is always juicy. 14 Millington in the bag from the 75 keys and some very useful supplies in there. Apologies to anybody hunting the Dagenhai road body, we do now have three of them. That means because we actually have lost two pieces previously, we got seven pieces and 366 chests for anybody curious. Going to voice over this one so you don't have to uh, listen to me frantically panicking, but look at this absolute beast that gets on me whilst I'm on a Revenant task. Thank God that hit a zero because my reaction time was the slowest thing I've ever seen in my life. But look at this guy. He is decked out in like maximum, max, max, maximum. And I catch an entangle first cast while he's in full Missouri, the Wyvern shield, just like literally everything. That guy's got to be absolutely fuming. But the silly birdie didn't bring any seeds and it's an easy log out, mate. We got a very cheeky little level coming in. That's 89 Slayer. <laughs> absolutely scammed out of the pop up due to a million things attacking me. But level 89 slayer i've been doing a load of wilderness slayer and i've been targeting a task that can drop me hard clues we now have been able to juggle through 10 12 odd tasks clue scrolls um, and we actually have three in total now i'm a little bit worried about they're quite easy to lose here so we're going to run them up to the rose castle and see if we can turn it into a casket Right then, we're back up at the Rose Castle, and for those of you that remember from last episode, Mr. Ed Ward caused us a few issues, so my left click is going to go walk here so we don't make the same mistakes again. Oh, peek here. Oh, I'm not going to get to log out. There's a delay on the chest, so you're not able to log out. Um, maybe we'll go for a little bit of stair roulette, or possibly we can just try and entangle and log him. Um, yeah, I think we'll go for the entangle and log, and if we can't, then maybe go for the stairs. I should be okay here if it's just a one PK. Um, he is, ma oh, oh no, he's good. okay. There's, <laughs> there's a few of them now. Um, I think this is a GF. Um, we've got 80 seconds on the clues. Better to probably just die to so make sure we can get back in time for them. And hello there, little buddy. Uh, because I'm not scared, I've actually got Dagon High, and it's just a pure. So, for once on this account's life, I'm actually out gearing someone. Caught the entangle, so. Has he got any seeds? Doesn't have any seeds or any friends, so it should be a nice easy logout. You've got no friends! You don't know friends. seeds. Okay, we're making it back to the clues. Uh this the three clues this side are the three wildy steps. I've gone six dry on um, clue steps, so I decided to pick two at a time to see whether any would be wilderness. 
The first one is not as disappointing. Come on, one out of two, we'll take it. Is it going to be a wilderness step? You bastard. This time, we've gathered three clues on the left-hand side. Again, these left-hand side clues, I've no idea whether they're wilderness steps or not. As soon as I've got them, I dropped them. First one is Barbarian Village. Um, yep, yeah, nope, that's not in the wilderness. Come on, one of these three. I'll take one of the three clue scrolls to be our fourth step. Come on, second clue is going to be... Oh, that's that's a real kick in the gonads, isn't it? It's a, it's a wilderness one, but we can't get the items. Oh, Jagex, you cruel mistress. And the third one, you bastard. Okay, so we have acquired ourselves another three clue scrolls. If none of these will do steps, that's 15 dry. But Jagex wouldn't do that to me. We're surely not going 15 dry. Of course we're not. First one is... Not a wilderness step. Oh, you know, you know when you just get a horrible feeling that you know the way this is going. Oh, thank the Lord. Yes, boys, that's clue step number four. Getting four steps is really, really nice. I know I've only got one more to go. Can we finish it now? Pirate Pete at the Ectofuncus. You are not a wilderness boy, unfortunately. Nope. 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 Hey, and there she finally, finally is, boys. That is Clue Scroll in the Wilderness number five. We are going to go for one more, just see if we can get the back-to-back. -back. You never know, you never know, and that would be a guaranteed casket. If it's not the back-to-back, -back, you'll probably just see me doing the Clue Scroll. Here are the clues safely in the Enclave. Hopefully we don't let any of these despawn now. That would just be uh, falling at the final hurdle. It would be really painful. As always, if we can see a back-to-back -back Wilderness step, it's a guaranteed casket. I believe somebody worked out with five clues. It's like an 85% chance. This is the lootations we got whilst getting these clues. We did die for two looting bags, but this is the one we brought home safely. So let's get these clues done. And please, Jagex, reward us with a casket. Well, there we have it, a casket. Um, caught me completely by surprise because it was only step four. Yeah, step four, I think, is the earliest you can get a casket. Um, in my head, I was just praying for step five or a back-to-back. -back. I completely disregarded it could also be step four. Um, so, yeah, that was a real surprise. But, boys, we have a casket after the trials and tribulations of the last one. I'm going to quickly run back to the enclave to pick up my last wilderness steps for the next clue juggling session, but uh, I'm excited to open this one. Now, settle in for a story time. I really probably shouldn't be telling you this, but there is a way to hack your clue casket RNG. You first have to forge a gold ring from scratch in a furnace protected by zombies and spiders. You then have to travel to the deepest, darkest depths of the wilderness, where you will come across a volcano. You must toss your freshly forged precious ring into summon the volcano goblin. And finally, you will be rewarded with riches beyond your wildest dreams. Oh, a unique red dehyde chaps. Okay, <laughs> red dehyde chaps. Gee, that's gonna match my uh, red dehyde body beautifully, isn't it? Right, unironically, boys, that's actually a pretty good clue scroll because of the chaps. I have no other way of getting any dehyde chaps. Okay, don't grow too attached to them because they're easy to lose. But that's not a bad clue. Absolute pinnacle fashion scape now. Look at the state of that man. You simply would not mess around with the Red Warrior, would you? You come across this guy in the wilderness, you are running. You are breaking your ankles to get away from this man. <laughs> but seriously, look at that look. That's quite humorous. Whilst gathering just the last two scrolls, we've gained 260k thieving XP, which means those two scrolls at 33k an hour took us about eight hours. So, uh... That's not worth a little like and a little sub on the video. I don't really know what is. Right, well, that's enough procrastination now. We now have the gems to nail this A to crafting and get our best in slot amulet. Crafting's been a long time coming on this one. Normally an Iron Man would do something like molten glass or maybe buy gems from a shop, but the only option for us was to either get gems from a monster drop or a chest like the Larens or Rogue's chest. So we've been collecting for a while. First level coming in is level 75. I only wish we could craft red dragon hide chaps, but unfortunately we've got no way of telling it, but it's a nice level to see. Level 76 coming in. That's 77 crafting, and that is actually a level for red dehyde bodies, but again, we can't craft dragon hide armor, so uh, we'll just kill yet another 5,000 crazy archaeologists. 78, just two more to go and now we're on the high level gems the xp is really really good for wilderness rates coming in with level 79 crafting if we could make the hard we'd be able to make our first black but uh, we can get the van braces from smoke devils 
That's going to be the final level we're able to get with cut gems. It's time to do the much, much slower version of crafting jewellery. Look at that XP now. We're used to notoriously low rates, so it's really nice to see. We're just coming to the end of the Dragonstones now. I remember back in the day watching Sayumi cut Dragonstones for crafting XP, and I was like, wow, he's so rich. How's he able to do that? Look at me now, wilderness locked, cutting Dragonstones. Love to see it. The final level that we're going to get is going to need to be for a making jewellery, but to be honest, it gives us useful things like Rings of Jewelin that we can teleport to the Enclave with, with and dragonstone jewelry anyway the closest furnace for us wilderness folk is running from the enclave to the level 28 furnace it can be a bit of a pain with the zombies and spiders but you can trap them behind the furnace doors which makes it not so bad i also don't want to waste any time on the jewelry so i superheat the gold on the way up and enchant the jewelry on the way back down there is also a conveniently located restoration pool in the enclave as i do lose some hp running through the dragons and more importantly it restores our run energy and here we have it, this is going to be level 80 crafting, really really happy to see that one, can now craft the dragonstone amulets that then we can obviously make into the amulet of glory. Only the one ball of wool, so we'll have to collect some more of those, but we do have one to be able to make the glory. Right then, let's craft that dragonstone amulet. We can use our ball of wool on it to create the dragonstone amulet, and finally we are going to be able to enchant it to finally grab ourselves the amulet of glory. Let's slip that thing around our neck. Hang on, just let me uh, see off this spider. I'm trying to ruin my clip there, Mr. Deadly Red Spider. Well, I see ya, I see ya. Right, coming in. Here we go, amulet of glory has been acquired. Oh shit! The uh, the imp champ scroll. That's oh, that's really nice to see. We've we've killed like a hundred imps um, in this session. We, we've killed a fair few for blue wizard hats and balls of wool before. But uh, yeah, champion scroll. We've definitely killed well under five thousand with the echo key as well. In case anyone's was wondering, this is how we get our balls of wool and uh, red. Uh, sorry, blue wizard hats. That's from the imps. We are now packing a decent amount of useful jewellery, so that's really nice to see. I want to clear up a few things that people have been asking for in the last uh, few episodes. So when I see my playtime, it is 144 days. What an absolute nerd. This is my Revenant's log. Obviously, that's greened out. Uh, what else we got? we got the Callisto log. Still searching for the pet on Callisto. Carlos Elemental, not done many of him. Fnatic, uh, 1,000, which is a drop of the pet. We ain't got that. Obviously, complete crazy archaeologist. Over 5,000 kills on that. Uh, King Black Dragon, we've done uh, 20 kills. Obviously, that was a Season 2 exception, so we haven't done many of those. Scorpio, we've completed uh, 613 of those. Venonatus, we are pretty dry on that ring. And Veteon, obviously, we have the pet, but still are awaiting the ring on that one. So, yeah, just people have been asking, so I want to show off a few of those logs. Oi, oi, ladies and gentlemen, I hope everybody's doing okay. As you can see, we've got the red gold legs on. We've never had the hide legs. We're going to take them up to the Revenants. You might remember a little while ago, we tried doing the 10 hour challenge up at Revenants. We tried staying up there for 10 hours. Thus, the 10 range potions. It means we don't have much inventory room, so we have to have a bit of inventory management. I actually failed the 10 hour challenge the last time I did it, and I don't really like failing. So we're going to give it another go, see if we can manage to stay up for 10, 10 hours. The last time we, we ended up losing quite a lot of goodies. So let's hope that doesn't happen again, see if we can get anything juicy, and uh, yeah, let's see how this one goes. Well, we've been up here, we've taken a sip of our first range potion, and uh, yeah, been up here about two minutes, and he has the agility shortcut. Fortunately, I do think I've got a little bit of gap here. Unlucky son, you're going to have to have slightly longer arms than that to be able to catch this one, I believe, and we're out. Well, the Messiah returned. Turns out his arms were long enough. Let's just drop these and hope he doesn't pick... You little shithead. Um, okay, that's, that's a DR legs gone. Yeah, didn't juggle the hours worth of clues for you to pick them up. That's an F and a uh, good fight, I guess. This isn't going very well, is it? Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. This was Einstein's parable of quantum insanity. Now, <laughs> for that reason, he's a pretty clever man. Let's listen to the fella. So for that reason, I'm going to change it up. My biggest problem is I didn't have enough food. We don't actually need range potions. Not really sure I'm taking them. I'm killing a bloody pyrene for goodness sake. So now we get more food. Let's get back to this and see if we can now get to the 10 hours. We've been attacked a few times, but they were really easy escapes. Didn't have the agility shortcut. We've been up for here for an hour. So let's take all the effort out of the bracelet. And uh, yeah, let's see what we got in the first hour. 1.3 mil. Now that is not bad from, uh, from a pyrene, is it? I'm pretty happy with that. As you can see, I'm alking all of the lootations, so we can stay up here for the full t 10 hours, anything that's not noted or runes or anything. So, uh, yeah, not a bad first hour to kick us off. 
He is a big boy, isn't he? He really, really is. The 16 million emblem. I'd love to take that to the bank. I, I really would, but... I can't. I've set myself a challenge, and I just I'm, I'm not the sort of person to to back out or allow myself to. So, guess we're going to be risking him. We're now a couple of hours into the challenge. Obviously, Luton Bag has increased dramatically with that emblem. Um, yeah, we're nearly full. I'm not actually sure that I really should have been picking up these runite ores because they're not noted, and it means that we don't actually have much room in the Luton Bag. So I'll figure out what I'm going to do about that. Okay, so Luton Bag is now completely full. Um, I've made the very, very clever decision <laughs> to destroy it. It actually says when you go to destroy it that everything will be um, lost. It won't be lost, it just gets dropped on the floor. So let's get that 16 million emblem. Um, if someone comes running along now, they're going to be very, very happy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up all the stack of items and then I'm going to basically be out and everything else. Um, was this a clever idea? Absolutely not. Should you just bank and, and, and deposit your loot and bag and come back? Yeah, of course, but we set ourselves a challenge, so uh, let's do it. Ah, uh, yes, the other problem. Um, we've helped all our things, still don't have enough room, so we've got a few bits on the floor. We also have, like, no food now, and we've actually got to get the loot and bag back, so let's hope we get that back, like... There it is. <clears throat> Wasn't at all worried that I was going to completely balls that up and get attacked and potentially lose everything. Sneaky little one miller coming in. Three hours in, let's take a little look at loot and bag. Up to 19.2 mil, so nice little bit of risk should we get PK'd. Loot and bag over 20 mil now at four hours in. That was a really quiet hour. In fact, we didn't get attacked a single time. And I'm pretty sure that's going to be Gap. You're going to have to get some faster running shoes if you wish to catch the Mr. Wildenator. Five hours in. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, not another one. Oh, that's two 16 million emblems. I'm going to have the looting bag. This is going to be quite the beefy bag. Six hours in, 37.6 mil. That's about six mil an hour at the Parfines currently. Obviously, we've been ridiculously uh, lucky with the emblems. Now would be a really bad time to die, wouldn't it? Jesus Christ, because of the Vengeance animation, that was some big, long Mr. Tickle arms that threw that entangle at him. Um, couldn't have actually teleported because we've locked ourselves to the cave for 10 hours and he just teleports away in shame. Oh, that got the heart racing a little bit. I believe we uh, missed um, hour 7, so this is hour 8 and we're almost at 40 mil, which is absolutely crazy. When we got attacked before, um, we were really, really low on food, but thankfully we've replenished all that, so hopefully we can see out these last couple of hours. This man's an absolute beast. He was using Airwave, then Earthwave. Now he's repping the Rune Crossbow. This man, look at him. And the Dragon Knives. Jesus, you got any inventory slots left at all? <laughs> what an absolute beast. Repping the Blue Pea Hat and the D-Skim. Switches on this man. Honestly, look at him. Puts the Tribrids to absolute shame. This is how we're currently looking, our 9 over the 40 million mark in the bag now. Ancient Crystal, we've got a whole load of these now, so uh, maybe when we get the 80 construction we'll just fill our house full of obelisks. We meet again at last. The circle is now complete. When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. Holy shit, nothing left in the inventory. Oh my god, I thought we got away earlier. Oh my god, just log out before he seeds again. He did this to us earlier. Log, 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 log. Woo! That is the 10-hour challenge. Um, 
<laughs> oh Jesus, there's someone there, no food, no nothing, over 40 mil. He could just hit me and so easily kill me. Um, we did about 20 minutes shy of 10 hours. We're venomed, we have no food. If it's not good enough, then tough shit, basically, because I'm, I'm really happy to get out of here with my looting bag. We're going to call it 10 hours, and uh, yeah, over 40 million in the bag. We had a couple of close encounters, but all in all, that was good fun. This is why I do these sort of challenges, because it just makes it, just makes the whole thing a touch more fun. After that little session up at the Revenants, I decided to pull out all of my emblems, because I was slightly curious at what we were out cash-wise. I think we got quite a bit in there. And indeed we do, 182 million emblems. Um, yeah, it'd be really nice to get, I don't know, like 500 million of these one day. Who knows what I'm probably going to do with them. Probably nothing. Following the Revenant adventures, I really fancy trying to work ourselves towards level 90 Slayer and seeing what we tasks we could pick up along the way. We're starting off with this superior. Unfortunately, nothing off it, but a Laren's key. Another superior, another key. Christ, I'm a strong boy. Abyssal Demons obliterated. Veteran Tass, seen off. Hellhounds, looks like we're going back to the big skelly boy. A couple of big strong lads, keeping me seated. Price on these is just getting silly. In, out, in, out, you shake, you all about. You do the hokey cokey, you lob the fuck out. That's what it's all about. Greater demons, tick. Double black demon task, tick. Dragon's task, so I did some KBD. Still horrible, but we did become a champion. Finished off at the black dragons. Chaos LA, it's been a while my cloudy compadre. De Duash, double De Duash. Chaos Gully task, completed. We have a spider's task and until I get the crawls back I don't really want to do Venonatus. I've previously showed a smithing method that I came up with but it was way way earlier in the series. So pretty much I run a full looting bag and full invent of bars to the anvil at spiders. I then use the bars, I destroy the looting bag and all the bars drop on the floor so I essentially am able to get two invents in one. I then obviously need to reobtain the looting bag for the next trip so I kill the spiders to get the looting bag back. Thus completing my slayer task at the same time. It's not going to be a ton of smith and XP each task, but it really will add up over time. This is always a super long one, as we've extended it, but that's going to be greater neck reels completed. Okay, spiritual creatures. So, this means a little something. These are killed in the God Wars dungeon. We're able to get an armed item from the crawlsbow when we reobtain it. We're able to get Saradomen and Zamorok through the um, God Capes. The one that we're not able to get is Bandos. But, I do have a method how to get a Bandos item. And you're about to see it. The ways I can get a Bandos item is getting lucky through a clue. But as we know, clue struggles on this account are huge and take a ridiculously long time. Or LMS. It is still going to be a silly grind. But I do tend to play LMS for like an hour a day just to warm up. And I do quite enjoy it. Can't really handle much more than an hour. But we're going to do that and go for the Bandos Halo. This really does pay me, as I think they're outrageously priced. Uh, 450 points, that could literally be 1800 Supra stores or 7k anglers, but here we go, we're gonna have to get the Bandos Halo. It would also actually be 18 mil cash um, if you were to sell uh, for normal items, but Bandos Halo obtained. Let's see how this little bad boy looks on our head. Yeah, okay. Uh, definitely worth 450 points, yeah. Well, thank the Lord that this can actually be imbued so we don't lose it. Uh, yeah, it's going to cost 500k in the trove parchment, but definitely worth. Hey, you're the guy. <laughs> Man, you are one pathetic loser. Kill of this spiritual mage, that's going to be the task over. And I do have to say, although the Bandos Halo was a hell of a lot of LMS points. It really, really did make the grind a hell of a lot more chill and a hell, hell of a lot more enjoyable, not being attacked by anything. Also got a lamp and that's gonna be a hunter level, now up to level 21. 
five Larian keys that task, and a pair of Draconic boots. So all in all, we really can't complain. Black Demons, down. Greater Demons, down. Got a Soupy Dust Devil and had no prayer, no prayer potions, had used the lot. So I thought, well, if I teleport away, he's probably going to despawn. And uh, this is the chance at the old imbued heart. So let's give him a little go. So I'm going to sit here for 76 hours, flinching him, and surely we'll be rewarded. Or not, as the case may be. Honestly, you can't write this shit. I've just done the exact same bloody thing. You've gone and done me twice. Reven Evan Evanence done? I really am having some trouble with these superiors. He's absolutely smashing my head to pieces. Again, making use of the Halo, that's Spiritual Creatures task done, and that is actually 400 Wilderness tasks in a row. 400. 625 points for the 400. That's pretty crazy. We're up to 255 points. Um, yeah, really nice to hit 400 Wilderness tasks. About to grab ourselves, level 94 attack, scammed of the pop-up. Congratulations on the Onyx Bolts, Mr. Spider, and that's Jelly's task complete. Don't forget your face rag, ladies and gents. And that's going to be a left-right, good night. 700 kills up at Scorpia. Odium Shard 3, and I now actually have all the pieces for another ward if I need it. Scorpion's task done at their queen. An absolutely huge level coming in. That is level 90 Slayer. It's certainly not a quick skill on this account as we can't barrage tasks or use the cannon or anything. So that's a really, really nice level to see. Most of our Slayer has done it at about 15k XP per hour. So uh, yeah, level 90 is quite the achievement. Hello guys and welcome to Season 2 Episode 12 of the Wilderness Only Iron Man series. To get this episode out alongside other commitments that I've had, I've really had to put in the time in getting up at 5am, I know, poor me, to edit and things like that. So if you could leave me a premature like, I would really, really appreciate that. You can claim a full refund at the end of the episode if you're not satisfied with your purchase. Likes are non-refundable, should you choose to revoke your like, I'll have to send out the headies to have your kneecaps. As I'm sure you're all aware, on the 25th of January, the new Wilderness Rework boss comes out. So I'd like to do two things in this video. The first being a little bit of housekeeping, and you'll see what that entails, and the second being a revenant grind. So first things first, we're just going to sort of go through our bank a little bit. I'll explain a little bit about the bank. It's going to be fairly nippy, and what we need to collect. We're just dra dragging through now. First thing we come to is the 24,000 tuners. That's going to be a lot of cooking XP banked. We've also got some potions and just some miscellaneous stuff at the bottom of this tab. The next tab is really where it's all about. I mean, we've got 1.15 bill, which is pretty crazy. We've got two pets, Vession and Scorpio. We've got all those emblems, Chain Mace, Serum and Scepter. We're hoping to get the crossbow back at some point, which, uh, yeah, might tie into the plans for this episode. We've got the Halo in the last episode. We've got the Dagon High. We've got loads more Larian keys to open. We've got the Odium and Malediction Ward. We can also make some extra wards. We've got loads of Dragon items, loads of Rune items. In fact, a side goal of mine, pretty um, pointless, but I'd like to collect a 1,000 Rune Sets. Why? I don't know. Just seems kind of fun to have in the bank. And we're getting really close, actually. 230 Rune Pickaxes. You can see some gems there. Obviously, we got the 80 Crafting at the end of the last episode, so they've dwindled quite a lot, so most of those are cut. We've got a lot of Smithing Supplies. We've actually got quite a decent Smithing Level banked as well. We've got a whole load of rune ores there and then this is just sort of the range tab that we've amassed i mean a lot of this stuff is it is fairly basic stuff but you've got to realize we amassed all of this in the wilderness and um, pretty crazy really nice herb lord tab there we killed i previously had a rune light tracker of eighty five thousand kill druids this is what we used to afk um i've since wiped that but uh, yeah that's a hell of a lot of chaos druids and just a load of miscellaneous stuff down at the bottom the second thing we want to achieve is working on getting the crawls bow back we lost. Okay, yes, fine. Crawls bows back we lost. Before the rework, this seems like the best use of my time, and I'm sure the crawls bow will be best in the slot somewhere. With it being such a rare drop, it's unlikely. However, even if we don't land it, we're going to be getting FL, which will be really useful to power our chain mace. And who knows, they may even make the Theramon Scepter useful there. Kicking things off with a humble 1 million totem. Got ourselves a cheeky little lamp that trip. We're going to still be popping on Hunter, which is going to bring us to level 22. 
those eager-eyed folk among you may have noticed that we're using melee. Well, we've never actually used melee at Revenants. We've just always done it with range. We've got over 40 million range XP. Another reason I wanted to do Revenants, other than hunting the crossbow and the Avarice and all of the Ether, is because it gives us melee XP. And obviously getting as close to max melees before the bosses come out is going to be really beneficial. All of that being said and done, here is 96 strength. Slammed our way through our first 1,000 Revenant and Evenance, And here is the lootations from the first 1,000. We haven't died in those 1k kills. Hobgoblins is actually pretty cushy, to be honest with you. We've made a few escapes, but you've seen that a million times, so I just thought I'd show you the loot. Ooh, that's a naughty little emblem coming in. That's going to be a full Millington. Not too shabby at all. And with a quick quitch of the whip, that's going to be a level 95 defence. We've been grinding away at these revenants, I'm sure to you guys, it is just a mere moment, as we haven't had many clips worth of action or any massive drops, but this is what we're going to be looking at at 2k Hobgoblin kills. We're going to take a little break from the old revenants, as there's a few bits that I'd like to tidy up before the introduction of the updated wilderness bosses. Look at the hell yeah! We have got 49 Laranial Keys. I want to bust these open, as now we have 90 Slayer, I'd like to collect them from 90 to 99 without using any. And these are the ones that we had left over from the Grind to 90 Slayer. <laughs> no way. You always go on the last key like, oh, suspense, hope to get something, and then it's just like pure essence. But no, we actually got the Dagon High pieces. As you can see, we got two Dagon High pieces and 49 keys. I do very much apologise to those looking for their first set that's gone a little bit dry. This is how the Dagon High is looking on the collection log. It's nice to see some spares there because I do have a habit of making Dagon High go Dagon by. Something else I've wanted to complete for some time is the Elder Jurid robes. We haven't been able to get the final piece of Slayer like I'd have hoped. So it's time to take things in our own hands and actively hunt it down. But first, we're going to get ourselves a herb sack. Why we've killed so many Chaos Jurids and not got the herb sack, I don't know. If anything, you guys are as much to blame as me. Because somebody's only just picked up one of the comments now. So, uh, yeah, we'll all take a little bit of partial blame in this and pretend that it never happened, shall we? It's an Elder Chaos piece. Unfortunately, it's yet another hood, so we continue to hunt that skirt. You know when you finally get that drop and the collection log pops up and gives the viewers a bit of dopamine, you see the drop on the ground, and everyone's like, woo, woo, they got the drop. Yeah, no, lost it. <laughs> yeah, don't know how. Absolutely no idea. Been searching for it, can't find it. Gone. But that's how the chaos completed. Something we've slowly been working on, and when I say slowly, I really do mean slowly. The first clip in this is 70 free fishing. I recorded this on the 7th of February of last year. So nearly a year ago. 74 fishing seems to have gone missing. We no longer have that clip. Then again, I can't find a clip from yesterday. So I think I've done well to keep any of these. Fishing is a bit of a silly grind on this account. It maxes out about 15k XP per hour. We only have access to shrimp and anchovies. Yep, a level 1 skilling method. Welcome back to the modern day where we are about to get ourselves level 80 fishing. Now, Dark Crab's are level 85 fishing, I hear you cry. However, we got a little sneaky sneaker up our sleeve. We can get a plus 5 boost, how can you do that? We can get that from the Admiral Pie, how can you get the Admiral Pie? I can get that from Scorpio, I've already killed a lot of Scorpio, so I've already got a lot of Admiral Pie. And if you're paying any attention to the Season 2 video or to any of our end screens, you know at 85 we can unlock the lobster pot. So what I'm basically saying is... I've more or less get 85 now because I can get the lobster pot and I can technically fish a dark crab. So I think we're going to go do that. Capiche? Anyway, there's 80 fishing. We just need to munch this tasty admiral pie to boost the fishing to the desired level. And then we catch our dark crab. One eternity later. Well, there you are, Mr. Dark Crab. You took your time to get in my little pot. But first ever... Raw a dark crab acquired on the account. We recently finished off a odium shard piece that we needed to be able to make both another odium and malediction ward. Let's get these pieces thrown into the volcano. Now there is actually a good reason for us doing this, which you're about to see if I can actually find the bit where we forge it to throw him in. There we go, two brand new shields. 
And that is that I don't believe we've actually bought a ward ornament kit before, so we're going to go ahead and buy a couple of those for each of the shields. The reason I hadn't upgraded our original ones is I can't really... Oh, it's a collection of... I can't really make my mind up whether I prefer the original or the upgraded version. I really do think that the originals have slightly more of a nostalgic feeling and they sort of match the original obsidian shield. But we're going to try them both on. You guys can give me your thoughts. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know what it is about them. I just feel like they look a little bit new school. Although I don't really like that term because I don't mind that. But I just like the way the old ones look. You might notice we only spent pretty much all of our points in the last episode. And we've already regained a lot of them. I've been quite enjoying LMS and I thought it'd be a really nice way to be able to get some supplies for the new wilderness bosses. So we're not lacking. So we can just go straight in and give them bosh. And it's just a nice way for me to warm up. If you guys sort of want to get your fingers moving or want to learn a little bit about PKN, LMS is a nice way just to get warmed up. We got ourselves 96 attack, which is going to be the final melee stat before the rework. We also managed to slip in another 1k kill, so on the screen is the loot from that. That will be the final amount of Revenant kills that we do in this episode now, because it is Monday, which means in two days the rework is happening. No lock on the crawls, it was a bit of a long shot, but I do have access to other ranged weapons, as well as the Vigoras and the Theremin Scepter, so I'm sure that's going to be plenty sufficient enough to be getting ourselves some nice kills. Despite not getting lucky with the crossbows and those 3000 revenants, we did get a lot of bracelets of ethereum that we're going to be able to crush up and get ether from, and that's going to power our wilderness weapons. By the time we'd finished with our whole load of bracelets added to the ether that we already had, we actually had over 70k ether, so that should last us for a little while, and it's going to be really, really useful to match with the other supplies. Hello guys, how are we all diddling? Welcome to episode 13 and the final episode before we kick off season 3. The boss wilderness rework is finally here guys! I thought a nice place to start would be to show the log before we kill any of the bosses, so you can see where we currently are and also it will be a nice point of reference for myself. I've actually just realised we've already got the pet from Vetti on, and because of the graphical rework of the main guy, I'm sure that the pets have been updated as well, so let's see, yes, the little model's been updated, so let's have a little look at this guy and see what he's looking like. Hey, that's pretty cool, I think Jaggett's have done a really nice job on that, big fan of him, very, very nice, let's metamorphosize. Okay, that's cool, so you can have the regular versions as well, so that's not too bad if you like the old version, is it? Nah, the new version be looking a lot, lot better in my opinion. We firstly decided that we are going to try and use a rune crossbow on all of the bosses. Just bring some really welfare gear out. I got one KC on all of the single variants. On screen is me very, very badly killing the bosses. These clips were created the second that the update dropped. I went in completely blind just in some welfare gear. It was just great fun nose diving into the unknown and brought back some of the nostalgic feeling of just really not having a clue what you were doing. Having to try and think on our feet and just work it out completely alone. No guides, no nothing, didn't watch any streamers, we just went in balls deep. We instantly took a liking to Calvarion. The mechanics were really cool, the look was fantastic and it was the first boss that we started to really knock out the kills on. Kill number 10 is where everything changed. It dropped two doses of super combat potions. This is going to be absolutely huge for Wildenator and something we previously didn't have access to. It didn't take long before we get into our first tussle and trust me the first day was absolute mayhem. Magical, but mayhem. There are some ruins eight levels down from Cal... let's just call him Singles Vetagon and save us all the trouble. The ruins have four floors. Ladder Roulette with four floors really doesn't put the odds in the PK's favour. If you can tank it to these ruins, you'll almost certainly get the log, and that's exactly what we did with our first encounter. <gasps> Ring of the Gods! Yes! Get in! I'm in the Discord call with some of the boys right now, so that'll be spoilers for some of them, but what a result! Day of release, Ring of the Gods! The bosses have been absolutely booming, and I've been having such a blast. As you can imagine, there's been a fair bit of this. Luckily, I don't risk too much other than the ether in my weapon, but we've also had a little sprinkling of this. There we go, that's going to be KC50 up Calvarion. Uh, really enjoyed that, it's a really nice mechanics to this boss, but let's move on and do some of the others. All of the boss lairs have surrounding areas with either gates, trees, or something that you're able to entangle behind, which is pretty nice for the escape. 
You know something? You're right. If you get lucky with PKs and a few supply drops, you can actually get half decent amount of kills. I think this was about a 10 kill trip, so if we can get a few more of those, it's not going to be too shabby at all. Not bad money either, to be completely honest. This is going to be KC50 at Spinnel, the big old spider. So let's get our arse over to the single variants of Callisto and see if we can do a bit of that. It's been a while since we used the VLS, so I wanted to dust him off and see what he was like against RTO in the Bounty Hunter world. Whilst the specs were actually pretty good and hit him pretty hard, the rest of it was a pretty slow kill and we soon realised it wasn't going to be a particularly viable method for killing Artio, unfortunately. Now I'm not one to be in the PK Shaman market, but this PK ended up doing more damage to himself than he did to me. If you have some decent anti pk and gear, it's very viable to anti at all single variants. We did manage to hold down Artio throughout this kill with the man bolting us and we did manage to get the kill. The most efficient way to kill Callisto is to freeze him in place and range him down. Whilst we're still learning and wanting the initial 50 kills, we used a far more scuff method of just sticking some tank gear on, excepting he's going to hit us a bit through melee, Ruby bolting him down to half health and finishing with the chain mace. It's certainly the Nubia method, but you don't have to deal with any prey switching, nor can he knock you back because you're meleeing and hugging the wall. Once we have a better feel for Callisto, we will use the freezing and ranging method, but for now this worked and managed to get us to the 50 kills. I decided to hold a little event up at the Multi Callisto to try out our first multi boss. This was organised and done on Discord. It's public, but we manually invite people, so drop myself or Aaron Adam will add you into the clan Discord. It makes it slightly easier to moderate, and I also like to get to know people on an individual basis. Or you can jump into the CC, which is just Wildenator. It was such good fun being able to do it with the boys, and pretty much since I start this account, everything's been completely solo, so props to Jaggets for making it so Iron Men are able to do this with some friends. It's really reclined, uh, way more than I'd expected. A lot of this is probably down to doing it with people far more experienced than myself, so thank you very much for that, boys. But I do think my go-to clanning boss will be Callisto. Definitely going to do more of these in the future, and maybe some smaller group than in artists. We didn't get any drops on this occasion, but we did have a blast. Speaking of which, we did a couple of kills as a trio. I don't have the clip, but here's a picture. First kill, one of the boys landed the fangs of Venonatus. Hopefully it'll only be a matter of time before one of the new uniques is mine. We now have a pretty good understanding around Calvarion. He has a few mechanics, whilst they're fairly simple, I do like the fact that if you do things purposely, you'll take no damage at all at this boss. One of his attacks, you'll see shadows on the floor. You need to run off of these shadows, else they'll damage you and slow your next attack. You can't run towards him, otherwise he'll smash you in the nose with a shield and slow your next attack anyway. Similar as before, at half health, Vettion will bring out his Hellhounds, although both Vettion and Hellhounds have much less HP than before. If you're a big, strong, beefy lad and you're able to hit a 75 and kill Vettion, you can actually skip this mechanic, but that's far beyond our capabilities on this account. When you kill the first form, he'll spawn an orange ring. You'll need to be two tiles away from these, so you can either run under him to the centre of the circle, or run away from him. Both forms have spots on the ground and you'll need to be two tiles from these. This is obviously a little RNG dependent, but as long as you're not directly on them, they don't hit you very hard anyway. And finally, once you've dodged them all and you've done everything correctly, you need to stand up on your computer chair, do a little jig, and you'll always get the dragon pickaxe drop. The solo bosses are a great way to learn the multi-bosses. I also sometimes just head up there and start killing them with random players. It really does have that MMO RPG vibe. Although, do beware of those naughty Void Waker spies. Little trip can be so beneficial for the account. We've got super combats, wines, bones, ores, really nice stuff. Sometimes you do get a swift kick back to reality with a big team kicking you in the head. But honestly, it's nice to see. I'm having a good time, but it's also great to see those that enjoy PKing with their mates having a blast too. Come on, Tubby, you're better than that. I splashed my fair share of entangles too, but on this occasion, bend the knee and take the seat, son. We now also have a pretty good grasp on Spindle. Firstly, you want to prioritise the small spiders. As they make Spindle stronger, they also drain your prayer and they do hit you for a small amount of damage. If Spindle does spawn a set of spiders when he's nearly dead, you're better off just finishing the kill at that point than re-killing the small spiders. 
Spindle will move twice each time before throwing a web. You're going to really want to prioritize avoiding the webs as they hit you for rapid threes very quickly. They also drain your prayer and your run. When you know he's on a web phase, you're going to want to be as close to the outside of his lair as possible as this will manipulate the webs so there won't be enough tiles for him to throw a full web. Also, when he's running about his lair, the web will be right at the edge so it's not going to get in the way of you getting to Spindle. Finally, just make sure you stay close to Spindle, else he'll range or mage you. This is on a cycle that you can work out, but honestly, just staying within the middle range is going to be the easiest option for you. We got 100kc at Spindle, and then we decided it was time to go and learn RTO. RTO proves to be our most challenging boss. We don't currently have the Crawl's Bow, and Feathers are hard to come by for us when we're using Bolt. We currently don't have Ancients, so we need to hold him with the Entangled spell, which is a little bit more difficult. Just as we were learning, things took a dirty, dirty turn. Your boy was skull tricked. Yep. It was one of the oldest skull tricks in the books. They leave and re-enter with an account that looks the same with a very similar name. I'd forgotten to open up my recorder on this one, so my art degree will have to do. I don't attack back all that often, but with the update came an influx of new PKs, so I thought, what the hell? But Wildenator, you massive penis, they have a skull prevention now. Yeah, without the Avarice to turn it off or sit Revenants, and I just forgot to put it back on. Two out of three of the new bosses, I would have been using the Chain Mace and likely lost that. So I'm so thankful that R2 was what I learned the lesson on. We did lose the Zami Dehyde Shield, but that will be fairly redundant once we reclaim the Crawls. I also lost Dagon High top and bottom. Yep, again. <laughs> but thankfully, we had a spare set. Then something happened. The Dagon High Sacrifice once again summoned the gods. I forgot to put the recorder up for the actual drop, but yes, 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 yes. Oh, that is so good. Claws of Callisto. That is such a good drop. 88 KC. I was only ever going to do 100. This boss was a pain in the ass. We've had some terrible times here. That's the Chain Mace attachment. The Chain Mace is what I'm going to be using for Veteon and Venonata, so I can absolutely session those out. Man, that is so happy. And if I was going to spoon one drop, I really, really wanted it to be the Claws. You can make the air sign chain mace yourself with 85 smithing. I have the things banked for 85 smithing, but it's a long old grind because of where the anvil is placed in the wilderness. And you bet your ass we ain't waiting for that to use this air sign chain mace. We're gonna be using this. You can go to this geezer in the Ferox Enclave and get him to make it for you. Oh, I'm so excited for this. Let's have a little look at the absolute beastly thing. Yes! Look at it. Look at that. Yes, very happy of that. The Ursine Chain Mace also has a special, which obviously the Vigorous doesn't. It deals an extra 20 damage over 6 seconds with a successful hit. So that's going to be a lot more DPS to the bosses. It's also good against PKs as it stops them being able to run for 3.6 seconds. So it will be a good escape from them. It would also be a good escape at Revenants as it reduces the PKs agility level. Oh, look at that big, strong, throbbing 51 with the Ursine. When you consider I'm really not in strength bonus, that is so nice to see. The Ursine is leading us to some big old beefy trips up here. I'm just walking away. Dooby dooby doo doo dooby doo doo. I'm just walking away. <laughs> Good fight. All good things must come to an end. We got quite a few escapes there, but uh, that Karassi into Claws Rage yes, is deadly. You do not know what to throw. There we go. We've been knocking out these kills. That's going to be KC at number 250. I think it's time we head over to some Calvenion to knock out some kills there. Let's have a little look in the looting bag. Oh, it is absolutely filled to the ba -ba 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 brim with goodies. Because it's a new update, Runelight didn't trap the start of the kills, but this is the loot from 149 spindles. We also put the Ursa to good use, knocking out 250 Calvenion kills. No Skull as of yet, but when we do get that, that's going to be a huge upgrade to the Theramon Scepter. It's going to be best in slot for the Crazy Archaeologist, Scorpia, and a hell of a lot of Wilderness Slayer tasks. On screen is loot we got from 250 kills. We got a ton of planks, and we'll have 80 construction in no time for the player-owned House Obelisk at this rate. Finally, we're going to be doing a new graphic for Season 3. This is everything I can think to include. Please let me know if you feel anything should be added or taken away. And I'll make a really nice graphic for it. I've already started planning Season 3 and the first episode should be an absolute banger and we'll explain everything. Thank you all very much for sticking through the series. The video has been absolutely popping off the last month or two. That being said, please do make sure you continue liking and interacting. It really does help more than you'll ever know. I absolutely love communicating with you guys as well. I really want to put the time and effort in, so if you guys are enjoying it, this will be by far our strongest year yet.
YouTube members is a nice way to support the channel if you've got a spare couple of quid kicking about. That being said, an absolutely massive thank you to Air, ELUW2, 202mm, Ian Beatty, Jacob Brooks, Carsten, Spiderkill93, and we have a new name on the list, Jay. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Brighter nights are coming, the evenings are drawing out, and things are looking bright. Until next time, guys, thank you very much, and goodbye.